It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. The brilliant force positively Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots, and today's show is brought to you by... Mercari! Mercari! Take it away, Schultz. Black Friday! <laughs> Small Business Saturday! <laughs> Cyber Monday! All made-up days just to get you to spend your fucking money. Damn right! right. Have, Have you, you heard, heard of, of Sell, sell Your Shit, shit Sunday? Sunday? <laughs> Ooh, we killed that one! We killed that one! It's, it's a, Destiny's Child. That's right, it's a day to sell the stuff you don't use anymore. You hear me, cocaine users? All you rehabilitated cocaine users still got a little left over? You can sell it on Sell Your Shit Sunday, okay? Created by... Mercari! Mercari! That sounds like a car. Damn right it does. But it's not. It's a selling app that makes it fast and easy to sell almost anything. You just take a few pics, add a description, and boom, your item is listed. Download Mercari and sell your shit today. The day may be made up, but the money is real. That's Mercari, M-E-R-C-A-R-I. Now let's start the show. You got church announcements, Schultz? Uh, yes. Boston, thank y'all so much, man, for coming out, selling out the shows. New York, this Friday. We'll see you there. And, um... Next couple weeks, we got Seattle, uh, Salt Lake City. We added another show in Salt Lake City. Then we got Vancouver, and I think we're going to add another, another little secret pop-up show in Vancouver because the other Vancouver show sold out. And then we got Edmonton, and then we're back. More dates at theandrewschultz.com. But I appreciate you guys selling out all these shows, man. It's been amazing. Thank you so much. I'm, um, I'm having my turkey... Uh, annual turkey giveaway this Saturday. Really? In Monk's Corner, South Carolina at Berkeley High School. Um, you know how we do every year, you know? It's just, it's been going on for a long time. Uh, I thank God that I'm blessed to do it another year. Fuck y'all who think that, you know, giving out turkeys is whack. Uh, that's Y'all are saying that from a place of privilege because there's plenty of people out there <laughs> who can't afford those butterballs or uh, whatever the right. fuck we use. You know what I mean? Who criticizes so, giving out turkeys? Well, you just see people turkeys. do that. I mean, I, I've seen that over the years. I see a lot of people say, like, you know, that's just something that, you know, uh, people do when they get in certain positions. Like, it's almost like a, a throwaway thing. It's like, there's no meaning behind it. Like, you're just doing it to make yourself feel better. And I'm like, no. Holidays have a certain meaning. Yes. Okay? Having a Thanksgiving. Have you ever celebrated a Christmas or Thanksgiving alone? Have you ever celebrated a Christmas with no gifts? Have you ever celebrated a Thanksgiving with no turkey? Nothing makes you feel fucking sadder. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yes. You're right. It yes. is a fucking sad day. Yes. I remember I, I talked about this very podcast. I think last Christmas, I didn't meet up with my family till later that day. Yeah. I was looking for a place to eat. Yes. I ate by myself in yes. a fucking hotel. Duval told me that Duval Horrible. said Duval said he had a baby because of that. He said he wanted to have a child, but he never felt alone on holidays. Seems like a huge investment. <laughs> But hey, it's <laughs> sweetheart. I had you for two days a year, but thank you for being. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, yeah. I, it's like regardless if this is what these families do with the turkey or not. Who knows? You know, maybe they could go flip the turkey somewhere else. We're not exactly That's their sure. business. That's their business. But having people to be around for the holidays is is crucial, man. I don't know yeah. what it is about. Like, it's so weird. It's like. During a regular, any regular Thursday or regular Tuesday, I don't care if I'm by myself watching Netflix, but if it's Thanksgiving or Christmas and I know everybody's with their loved ones and I'm not, I felt so fucking lonely, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Why yeah. is that? Why, I, why are we influenced by what other people are doing? It's FOMO. It's really just FOMO. It's FOMO. That's literally all it is. It's the fear of missing out. It's the, it's, it's a day where you know everybody's congregating, having a good motherfucking time, and nobody invited you over. <laughs> nobody think your joke slap. Ooh. Nobody likes your company. Nobody wants to talk sports with you. Damn, you getting personal. Nobody wants. No, I don't get that. I get. I get invited. I get. I. I. I am the person. I thought you were talking about me. No, I. I'm sitting around like I'm gonna be in most corner, and I'm like, no, we're not going over there. No, we're not oh, going over there. You, you, like, you're prissy. You're sedated. You got all the invites, and you're picking out who's you're gonna go to. Wow. But, <laughs> yo, a little extra sauce on that lap. <laughs> but no, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, this Saturday at the Old Berkeley High Gymnasium, 406 West Main Street, Mount's Corner, South Carolina. Local vendors will be on site. One turkey per household with valid ID. We'll see you for the sixth annual Third Eye Awareness Turkey Giveaway this Saturday in Mount's Corner, South Carolina. Question. Yes, sir. Why do you need ID to get a turkey? 
I don't know why Kente puts that on there. That's the dumbest shit in the world. I really don't. Kente has that on there. I don't even know why I read that just now. It's really stupid. Who gives a fuck? We got to get... Here, here's an ID that showed you I can't afford a turkey. No, motherfucker. Like, what the fuck does that mean? I already gave a turkey to a Jenkins. Yes. Are you related to the Jenkins family? Exactly. Like, come on, yo. By the way, even if I could afford a turkey, I would go get a free one. Yeah. Why the fuck wouldn't you? How much is a turkey? I don't know. How much a turkey is, Taylor? They expensive. Like 50? They're not cheap. A yeah. uh, hundred? Nah, they're not a hundred. 50? For real? Probably, and probably you got to think Thanksgiving Day, you know, they put the prices up on them. Uh, oh, you think they hike up turkey? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, listen, God bless. Uh, we'll see you on Saturday. Now, where do we start? Well, I think one place we can start at is, and it's inspired by turkey, but. They're a hundred something. Yeah. No. Let me see. Turkeys cost a hundred fucking dollars? Hey, man. Butterball premium. That just says a dollar forty nine, Taylor. Yeah. Because that's some organic, fresh shit. That's some fake shit. Let's do this Butterball, man. Let's pull up this Butterball. Organic, fresh is This Butterball premium, all natural, young turkey. 22 to 24. What's a $1.49 a pound? Exactly. So it's 24 pounds. So you're getting a 100-pound turkey? What's 24 times a dollar? 100 100-pound turkey is a raptor. $35? Wow. You Asian? $35? $35, $35. All right. So okay. where do we start? So um, I think a good place to start is because we're talking about things that not everybody can have, right? Okay. And, you know, uh, you know, turkey on Thanksgiving is something not everybody can have. Hairlines are things that not everybody can have. That's a fact. And I know that you're going through a little bit of, of hairline withdrawal. No. I, I know you, you don't want to admit it, but I'm looking at the posts. You know what I mean? Thou doth protest too much. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of leaning into a good bit. It it is a good bit. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I like the trap to pay. I like the alliteration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hashtag yeah. it. But I feel deep down when this technology gets good enough that it's literally just a cream and then your hair comes back. It's Chia Pet. I feel like you're in. Let me tell you something about Charlemagne the God. Please. Anything I've I've shitted on. Yeah. Is because I've tried it and it didn't work for me. Now let's talk about it, right? Okay. Uh oh. I did PRP. I what? did PRP. In a, wait, what is that? PRP. Yeah. You going, well, I don't know what you thought it was. <laughs> uh, honestly, I was like, you trying to grow titties, bro? What, are you <laughs> what the fuck is PRP? <laughs> you transition. <laughs> what, what is that? Yeah, PRP. Platelet rich. Plasma. Plasma, right? Yeah, 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 and it's a form of regener regenerative medicine that can harness those abilities and amplify the natural growth factors your body uses. That's what Kobe tissue. did in his knees. Yeah, so what, yeah. Doc, what Dr. Natasha Sandy, real? salute to Dr. Natasha Sandy, yeah. uh, one of my one of my trusted people in my cabinet. Yeah. She had been telling me about PRP because I would always see all of these people in there. Like, people go there for dermatology, Yeah. but then, like, I would see all of these guys in there, and I'm like, all these guys come in for dermatology? And she's like, yeah, but you know, a lot of people nowadays are doing PRP. Right. And I'm like, well, what is PRP? And so she just broke it down for you. It's when they draw the blood out of yeah. your, your body and then they put it in like this blender and then they yeah. spin it up and then it yeah. creates like this yellow plasma and then they take the yellow plasma and they shoot it back into, I guess, whatever it is you want to grow. Right. So for me, they shot it back into my hairline right here yeah. and shot it back into a couple bald <laughs> spots up top. Tory Lanez got it. Tory Lanez admitted he got it Got it this morning. Yeah. Envy still lying about whatever his procedure was, <laughs> you know? But I did it. The reason I stopped doing it, because you got to do it six times. Yeah. That shit hurts, bro. Really? For me. I I don't like needles anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to be getting needles in my fucking head, you got to really sit back and think to yourself, yeah, yeah. why am I doing this? Yeah, yeah. This is not a life or death situation. God blessed me with the type of head that is good for a baldy. Yeah. Just keep getting the shave, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm cool. What, what am I going to do with a hairline? You got what, what kind of hairstyle am I going to rock? Do I really want to Caesar that bad? No. Yeah. I don't do I see you with the Caesar. What would you do? I see like a little fro almost. The fact that I couldn't think of that? Think of what yeah. I would do. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I, I don't want it, and I wouldn't yeah. get a fro. That's too much maintenance. Like a high top fade, bro. I'm a I'm a get up and go person. Yeah, I can't be waking up in the morning with the pick and all that shit. I lived that part of my life. I experienced that. Yeah, but what about that black power pick? <laughs> that would be hard. That shit would be hard, dude. That would be hard. I'm not know? the front. That would like be a cool little mental health pick, that like massages be, no, your head. No, black power. I, you know I thought about. I thought about. Yo, it would be real dope to have a fro. Fro. Nobody's out. doing that no more yeah. with the black power. That shit would be so timely for this climate. Yeah. But I'm cool on it. You know what else is good for a colder climate? Mm -hmm. Hair. 
<laughs> hey, that's what I got hats. <laughs> it's your wool hat. Son, I am on the pills. And plus, you look I'm stupid. I'm on the pills to not lose my hair. You're talking really? so little. Yeah. You started losing your hair? Son, like 10 years ago. <laughs> I and I got on that. the pills so that really? it stops it. Yeah. You know Michael Preventative Rubin? Preventative measure. What? Michael Rubin. Yes. Michael Rubin went to the same doctor as LeBron. Well, he must have got a different, he got some white privilege treatment or something like that because <laughs> his hair looks official and LeBron's hair looks like astro. LeBron's <laughs> shit don't look official because we've seen him without hair. No, I, it, it doesn't look good because it doesn't look good. He has two really? bald spots in the back of his head. And even now? Even now. And then the front of his hair just kind of like slid back. It was really odd. You didn't see this when well, he that was- That was the receding joint. No, at, he got hit during oh, yeah, the game. And, and Anthony Davis told him, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. yo, yo, bro, get that shit well, back. Yeah, and by the way, LeBron, you're making too much money to have that kind of trap too. Especially in LA, where you know the best. In yes, Cleveland, sir. I understand it. But yes, in sir. Los Angeles, yes. you have to be able to get the best You hair. can get the best trap to pay that money can also. So run. you're saying that if it was light switch, you Why doesn't do Nike it? make LeBron a, a real fucking trap to pay? <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't that be the next thing? The yo, trap to pay with the Nike logo on bro, it? Oh, the real fly knit. That'd be sick, <laughs> dude. That would be sick. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> that. At LeBron, <laughs> dude, how have they not got on this? Worry, because LeBron shit right now is made a dry fit. That's what that shit is right now. The shit he wearing right now is a dry fit, goddamn trap toupee. That's what that is. <laughs> dude, he needs hair though. He did go bald and it looks horrible. I don't remember him. C bald. Certain people don't look good bald. He shaved it once and he was in the gym. Yeah, my little brother, my little brother Julian, he got a baldy now because he started losing his shit. Yeah. He way younger than me. Ay, and he ay, sent ay. us a picture of his new baby and it was just his bald head with the mustache. And I hit him back like, Bro, you already trusting your baby with strangers? I'm like, whose granddad is holding your fucking child? <laughs> is like, that bad? Oh my god, let me see if I got a picture. He looks crazy. He looked like he is. Mad that they building the wall at the border. Hold on. <laughs> he looks like, Mexican? Yes. Let me see. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Let's see if I can find him, Let me man. see this. I'm going to be firing his ass up next week. Anyway, the, um, so yeah, so we, <laughs> what, let me see, what? You got it? Let me see. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Bro, that's your younger brother, dude. Bro, he's like 33. <laughs> dude, he looks like Ving Rhames, dude. Bro, your younger brother looks like he's about to beat the shit out of Tyrese. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, bro, oh. this is nuts, oh, bro. Man. That's not your younger brother. Yes, That's got to be that man. app. Yes, he There's is. no way. I've never seen a black guy age worse in my life, bro. I, this is astonishing, dude. He's not no 33. 33 in Celsius? He loves you, This motherfucker you too. gotta Listen, be 33. Bro, he Yo. loves you too, bro. Listen, I love him, but he needed... <laughs> I, this, hey, bro, you need it. Son, you see what shirt he's wearing? Flash. He's aging like Flash, bro. <laughs> son, son, son. Oh, he got the he Flash didn't look on like this at your wedding, fast. bro. That was 10 years ago or five years ago. Shit happens. Dog, I never thought that... I no, that's Stop not playing, that. bro. That's not your younger brother, bro. Nah, because the facial hair... Is your facial hair that gray? Uh, In parts. My, cause my dad got a full gray beard. Charlemagne. <laughs> Charlemagne. 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 Oh, my there's God, There's no man. way. Oh. Yo, there's no way. <laughs> he got to shave all that down, bro. For what? Because he's a handsome guy. No. He's not, he's not, you know, he's a handsome guy. Let me see if I can find another picture. That's a handsome guy, but that his he looks too old. <laughs> Don't he look like, let me see this. <laughs> no, they put the old man app on him. They put the old man app on him. This is the old man app, you piece of shit. <laughs> Don't it's he look the old like man app, but it's only, a, it's only, oh, uh, that's fucked it's up only, it's only a year older than what he actually is. <laughs> You know, you can put the age on it. So he's at the 34. <laughs> bro, don't he look like, he look like you want to come here. Hey, come here, young blood. Let me talk to you. Oh, let me talk to you, young let blood. Let me talk to you, young blood. <laughs> uh, I, I might have a real picture in there. Let me see. Oh, uh, why'd you do that to him, bro? That's fucked up, dog. He just sent me a picture, too. Yeah, no, because he look. Hold on. No, nah, there's no way someone could age that bad in 10 years, bro. Shit. There's no way. Bro, you, you ever seen a crackhead? 
What do you mean? White women age yes. bad? You think? It's known. I don't date any of them when they get old. <laughs> when the last time you dated a white woman? <laughs> My girl now's white. <laughs> oh. I thought you gave up for him for Lent. I did. <laughs> then I then I came back, bro, just like Lent. You know what I, mean? <laughs> right, I just you. had a little sabbatical. Jesus showed me the way. Let's talk some football, Appreciate man. Appreciate you, Jesus. Oh, are we going to talk cap? We can talk cap and Antonio Brown, man. Okay, is cap out here capping? Is cap capping? Um, by the looks of things, no. I mean, by the looks of things, by if 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 there was a waiver that you know uh, w w that he had to sign that was going to cause him to have to give up his rights to possibly sue in the future, right? Um, nah, that's not cap, you know. Or I, but sue in the future, I believe it said for the time between uh, the settlement and the well, same thing he did last time. That's what he did last time. Right. Last time he sued for the the two years that he was out of the league. Right. Yeah. So he got a settlement for that, and he could he could take him back to court again in, in a couple of years. You know, clearly. Right. You know? So, like, I guess I I think what it said is you can't sue from the time between the settlement and the tryout. I don't think it said anything about after that. I I, I heard it was for future rights. Let, let's let's break the cap situation, Duncan. I can yeah. tell you, I went through a I went through a roller coaster of emotions with this. Right. Yeah. Uh, last week. Um, you know, we heard about the tryout. Everybody was saying, oh, tryouts don't happen on Saturdays. You know, why is the league doing this now? This is how I looked at it. Yeah. I looked at it as Colin Kaepernick has been blackballed out of the league for the past few years. Right. Yes. I think that the NFL knows that. The owners in the league know that. Yes. When you have somebody like a Jay-Z who's now got a seat at this table mm. and he's in there constantly pushing. Right. Not just Jay-Z, but people on the outside. The whole I'm with Cap campaign, mm. saying how we want Cap back in the league is just a problem that won't go away. And Jay-Z letting them know, like, look, you can do partnerships with me all day, but that's not going to make this problem go away right? until you do right by Cap, right? right? So I looked at it from the Fox News perspective. <clears throat> you know, people hate when I say I watch Fox News, but I watch Fox News because I like to see the other perspective because I like to see how people see things, smart. right? Other people Very see things. Very smart. The dude from Fox News was on TV yelling and screaming, <laughs> ranting and raving, saying, why is Colin Kaepernick getting special privileges? Why are they doing a workout for him on a Saturday? Why is it at Atlanta Falcon Stadium? Why is he able to pick his own receivers? Just yelling and screaming, all of these different things. He was mad. Mm. Meanwhile, the other side is looking at it suspiciously, as they should, sure. from the perspective of, what the fuck is the NFL up to? Why would the NFL have this happen on a Saturday? The reason all of this shit happened in an unorthodox way is because it was an unorthodox method of getting it pushed through. Right. It literally was somebody who has a seat at the table telling these motherfuckers like, no, this shit is not going to go away till y'all yeah. give Cap a tryout. Now, anybody... Can you, can you explain the Saturday thing real quick? Just Well, because most workouts are on Tuesday. And I guess that's because... That's when the team would have that's the most the, time. I think that's, that's like an off, off day. day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. hypothetically, a coach would be able to fly out on a Tuesday to watch, whereas a Saturday they're probably prepping for Sunday's game. Yeah, but I don't think I was also told by some players that coaches don't go to workouts. They, they, they would never go. I mean, yeah. a coach is working twenty four seven. They said based. They said depends on the player. Coaches and GMs might show up, but they was like right. most of the time, no. Coaches and GMs don't. They come would to send their staff, and then I guess some people believe that like. You, you don't want to send your staff on a Saturday because you might be doing game prep still and it could take away, right? By, and by the way, NFL scouts are always out on Friday. It's this thing called college football that they go and watch people all the time. So so the Saturday thing, I think, was kind of like a moot point, right? Yes. And from what I was yeah. told, you know, uh, it was it was three owners that specifically agreed to do this. Once the three agreed to do it, the NFL sent out the memo letting them know that it's going to be this practice on Saturday. Great. They was they were they were hoping for the spectacle. They wanted this big grand thing for Cap. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because after you've been blackballed for three leagues for three years, don't you think he kind of deserves that? Yeah. And I don't think that the NFL would put together this workout and you know have all of these teams come out and not sign him. They look even crazier than they do right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, they they look even crazier. Now, uh, my perspective of it was this: I wanted Cap to show up. I want him to work out. 
I wanted him to get back in the league. Not because I necessarily want him back in the league, but if that's what makes him happy. Because I think Colin Kaepernick is bigger than football. Mm -hmm. And I think what Colin Kaepernick represents is bigger than football. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And yep. I think that if somebody has shown you who they are, believed him. And I don't like this whole rhetoric of, you know, uh, well, Colin really loves football or Antonio Brown really loves football and there's no other place for them to go. I get that. I understand loving something so much that you just want to be a part of it, but not at the expense of your peace of mind, not at the expense of your integrity, you know, not at the expense of you having to kowtow to some motherfuckers that don't like you. I'm a stern right. believer in go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Like Antonio Brown literally said, fuck the NFL, you know, they're a plantation. I'll never play there again a couple weeks ago. Yesterday, he's apologizing to Robert Kraft. You know what I'm saying? That hurt my feelings. And the reason that hurt my feelings is because until one of these players says, fuck the NFL, and means it, mm. there's going to continue to be brothers in this position. Now, with Cap, Cap allegedly got the waiver on Wednesday. If he got the waiver on Wednesday and it had that language in it, one or two things should happen. Your lawyer should push back. That's what We get contracts all the time. Like, if there's something in the contract you don't like, you, you take it the fuck out, right? Especially if you actually do plan to show up and go work out. Like, you send the contract back. They said the contract got back Saturday, 12.03, PM. So yeah. I don't know why you would wait so long to Four send the contract to back. Four days to send it back. Right? If, 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 that, if, that's, Sorry, if that's true. Right. Also, if the NFL for came to you... Three days for one clause. It's yes. like a lot. If the NFL yeah. came to you and they said it's a take it or leave it deal... Yeah. Fucking leave it. That's it. Like you're Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. I don't give a... F like you, you can't... Even if you do love football that much, you got to understand what you mean yeah. to people at this point. And you represent something way bigger than you. You can't bow down to the league's demands because you don't have to. Mm -hmm. You're not some poor kid. You got the Nike endorsement. You got book deals. You got a TV show with Ava DuVernay. Like, you're in a position to where you don't have to do that. So if people see you, you know, conforming to their demands, even though you know that they're doing you wrong, what kind of message does that send? Mm. And when if, if you're going to show, I wouldn't have showed up at all. If that was in my waiver, if that was actually in the waiver and they was trying to get me to sign my rights away and my lawyer pushed back and they told me no and then they said some take it or leave it and shit, I wouldn't show up at all and I'll be on the internet with this waiver showing this shit in the air, letting people know these motherfuckers are still trying to collude against me. Look at this bullshit they're trying to make me sign. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. hypothetically speaking, if we put ourselves in the NFL shoes, mm -hmm. right? And let's assume there's no nefarious intent by the NFL. Let's assume... Um, Jay-Z goes in there, he speaks to these three very influential owners, gets everybody on the same page, and they all agree to literally give Colin the best chance to, to make a team. Yeah. Matter of fact, let's say we've had agreements from multiple teams. Let's say we've had agreements from multiple teams that they're, that they're truly interested. Mm -hmm. That if he plays decently, they think that they'll actually sign him, mm -hmm. right? Maybe that clause is in there because they're going... We are going to go leaps and bounds to give you the best chance to make a team. Something we've never done for any player in history. We've never had a single player, 25-team tryout. Never happened. The whole world is there watching. You have, we're going to do it in the Atlanta Falcon Stadium. We're going to do it on. In a black city like Atlanta. This shit was set up like a goddamn fantasy. Like Atlanta, the blackest city in the world. You, one man. 25 teams are here to watch you Succeed, work out. do well, best type, yeah. best case scenario. We want you to make a team. And not only do we want you to make a team, we've kind of spoken to owners that said they would sign you, right? Bro, you go, he was going to get signed. He was going to get signed. So for me, the language is, for me, the language is, we're, we're coming, and again, it could be wrong. This is just hypothetical mm -hmm. speaking. But one way of looking at it is we're going above and beyond to give you the best chance to make a team. Mm-hmm. So you can't sue us after this if you don't make the team because because we're literally doing everything, things we've never done for anybody else. If you still sue us after that, what the fuck? Well, guess what? If I'm Colin Kaepernick... You see what I'm saying, though? I, I see what you're saying, and you make a great point. Potentially, but if, hypothetically. Yeah, but if I'm Colin Kaepernick, I'm his team, I can't trust that. And, and you, I, I, have, I have no reason to trust that. And you, this is what you, we were talking about on Flagrant. There is so much distrust, I believe, from both sides. Like, the NFL put that clause in there because they don't trust Cap. Cap doesn't want to do it because they don't trust the NFL. Yeah. And you know what? 
He shouldn't. But neither both of them are absolutely correct. Because they've them for the last three years. Absolutely. And that's my whole thing, right? But if you've now been, you have that toxic relationship. You guys are never going to be able to never. work. And that's why I agree with what you're saying, which is if you know you're not going to do with it. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck them. And you got to mean it. You can't say fuck them, but I want to play and I want the owners to call me and stop being scared. Nah, nah man. Nah, fuck them. Nah. We out. No. no. After this week, Colin Kaepernick's mentality and a lot of other brothers in the league mentality and a lot of black people that watch football's mentality should be fuck it. If that waiver is really that. But you know why the reason nobody will ever say fuck it? Because there never was a clear-cut boycott called on the NFL by Colin Kaepernick. Mm. Colin, is the per- Colin is the person that has to lead that charge. Like, I saw my man Artemis Gordon talking about how, you know, Colin, you know, is a, he's, a, he's a leader whether he wants to be or not. So eventually he has to say something. That's the truth. You can't be a silent leader. Yeah, where are we going? Where, where are we going? What's what do you the, want us to do? That's it. How would you like us it. to protest? That's you it. made the decision not to talk to the press for the last couple of years, last three years. That's your decision. But don't be surprised if your message is being confused or conflated when you're not there to control the narrative. Even when you, you talked all this shit about controlling the narrative and how important that was to have your press or the press access to this, this tryout. You've never cared about press before. I would like to say that's not controlling the narrative. And, and, and what I mean by that is controlling the narrative is not doing exactly what people thought you was going to do. <laughs> like, right. Like they, a lot of people were betting that Colin wasn't going to show up. Uh, I, I was hearing words like self-sabotage being thrown around, like he'll find a way to mess this up. Mm. People thought people thought our, our, my, my, my beautiful sister, uh, who's mad at me right now, Nessa, they thought that she was going to wild out this week. You know what I mean? But Why is Nessa mad? I. I mean, we're just not seeing eye to eye on this situation. But, you know, I don't I don't worry about things like that simply because when I love somebody and I consider somebody family, I, I know even if we have disagreements, you know, we'll, we'll always be family. And I think, man, one, one thing that really bothers me about this situation, just a side note, it's so divisive. It's so much divisiveness between black people in this situation, right? People feel like they got to be team Colin. People feel like they got to be team Jay-Z. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? And when you have that kind of divisiveness, you got to be very careful of people who really, really, really want that divisiveness to continue to happen. Mm. So when they know, you know, mm. Colin and Nessa feel away, or they know, you know, Jay is over here, you got all these different people coming back saying certain things. Oh, well, you know, Jay, well, you know, uh, Colin them said this, or Colin and you know, you know, Jay and them said this, or, mm. you know, oh, you see, this person is against you. You know, this person was speaking about you. And it's such a lack of trust from everybody. And you're already naturally paranoid and suspicious of everybody's intentions mm. that you just be like, fuck everybody. I'm going to just stick over here with my motherfuckers mm. and, and, and kick it with my crew. You can't trust. You can't trust anyone. Mm. And, I, and I, the people use this divisiveness to really, to really to bring down great movements because everybody knows people are stronger together. You know what I'm saying? And you got to be very careful about people like that. Like, don't come to me telling me what somebody said about me when I'm when I'm going through something. You understand what I'm saying? Say that again. Don't come to me yeah. and tell me what somebody said about me when I'm going through something or I may feel a way. I'll give you an example. If me and you had an issue, right? Yeah. And no, it's, it's, it's happened. Yeah. It wasn't even a real issue. When all of that shit was going on, and everybody was like, oh, you need to stop doing the Brilliant Idiots podcast yeah, and this yeah, and that. Yeah. It was people coming to me yeah. trying to tell me how toxic Andrew Schultz is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and in that moment, yeah, yeah. I'm like, shit, well, maybe it is toxic. And yeah, you said yeah. one thing to me. You said one thing to me that brought me back to reality. What I said? <laughs> you said... Are you saying it's my fault? <laughs> are, you, are you blaming it on me? <laughs> Bro, you said it. And I said, he's absolutely fucking right. I pushed back a little because I was like, yeah, but you was laughing. And, you, and I'm like, <laughs> and you was making jokes and this and that. But no, nigga, you said it. Well, you didn't say nigga. But you said it. But no. no. <laughs> but, but you said it. Yes. And that's the truth to the matter. People, people will take advantage. They will take advantage when the emotions are high. And, and that's why you, and you can't come to me. You can't come to me, even if I have an opinion about Colin Kaepernick, who, yeah. who I respect and love because he respects and loves somebody I consider family, which is Nessa. Right. If you have, if I, even if I have an opinion about him, 
that may not be the general consensus or whatever, whatever. Right. You can't come to me and tell me anything bad about Nessa. I'm not going to let anybody talk bad. You know, you're not going to come to me and tell me uh, Nessa's anti-black anything like you know what i'm saying like i'm yeah. not gonna allow those conversations to happen those are family conversations that happen amongst people who i consider family right you know what i mean that's when i when i saw nessa and i saw captain tyler perry event i'm like motherfuckers we supposed to be family like if you got a yeah. problem with something that i said call me and check me tell me we can we have that kind of relationship yeah because i want the i want i want to have the proper information so i can go out there and defend y'all when need be it is it is a it is a very um is a very tricky situation especially when these type of things happen because two things can be true we often speak about that this on a podcast you can support everything cap has done and think that he didn't handle this in the best way possible no oh let, let's get back to that i didn't it's two reasons number one before i knew about the waiver right yes. i was just like Yo, this is ridiculous. Right. Like, just go to Atlanta and, and do just the ball workout out. if you want to play. Like, yeah. why are you, why did you wait until the day of to move it to a high school? And like, you can't possibly expect this professional organization where 25 teams showed up. You're dealing with a bunch of rich motherfuckers with egos. Yeah. They came to Falcon Stadium. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you switching it at the last minute, telling them to come to some high school an hour or something away. You got to know they're going to give you their ass to kiss. Yeah. You got to know they're going to throw the middle finger to you. Now, I was happy to hear that eight other teams went. Yeah. But if I'm an owner, Rex Ryan said this shit and this shit is real. Yeah. Rex Ryan was like, I don't want this I don't circus. I want this circus. It's, I don't want this cir I don't want this circus. Like, and I'm not I'm not saying that, you know, yes. people talk about respectability and respectability politics. And, you know, I saw them getting that Stephen A for what Stephen A was saying. Yeah. A lot of some of what Stephen A was saying is true. You yeah. gotta remember at the end of the day, you're the one trying to get a job. Yeah. We're not bosses. Yeah. I don't own iHeartRadio. You are asking to be an employee. You're asking to be an employee. And, and if, yo, why would you want to continue to work out? and work for these people that are continuing mm -hmm. to oppress you. Now, and when I say continuing, just this week alone, if what they say about the waiver is true and they want a cap to sign his rights away, mm. if what they say about the NFL saying take it or leave it, you got two hours is true, cap should be giving them his dick to suck. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> the NFL. Right. Like there's no reason to be down there on Atlanta on Saturday Playing their game. Yeah. These people can't play you unless you allow yourself to continue to be played. But speaking of football, this is Charlie Brown continuing to run the football and they moving, <laughs> Lucy moving the motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I see when I saw this and I don't like my brothers being in that position. That, that, and all that is true if the NFL did this whole thing to fuck over Kaepernick, which seems like a lot to I don't fuck see, someone I don't over. See, I, don't, I don't, yeah, I don't. I, I truly believe they they were going to get him a job. I do too. I, I, they were calling it, a, they're calling it a Trojan horse. Yeah. I, that's, I. What is that? So you get, who who's the horse? The Trojan horse would be the big workout. Right, so right? In, in the Trojan the big workout horse. The Trojan horse. They had the, the Trojans were inside the horse. Yes. They offered as a gift. As a gift. It goes inside Boom. whoever they, and then once it's in there. You got you. So what would be the Trojan, the Trojan horse? Trojan horse is the workout. Okay, the you workout. You sign this paperwork, you go do the workout, yeah. but we got you. That you can't sue us in the future. But you got a team. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If he if he got a job and balled out, he, he didn't have no reason to. But listen, I wouldn't trust him if I was capped. Because check it out. What if I sign that contract, oh. go work out, get signed, and then get cut in a week? Yo, 100%. <laughs> you know what I'm no, saying? No, 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 100%. Like grand opening, grand closing. Grand open, and, and listen, Word you're 100% right. You're 100% right. I, I just don't think it's the most unreasonable thing. I don't think it's the most, I, if I'm the NFL, I would actually be open about it. I'd be like, yeah, that was our deal. We're going to do everything in our power to get you on a team. We've yeah. got the whole fucking league to, to go see it. And in exchange for that, you got to not sue us. If you believe in your talent so much and you think it is so exemplary that you are going to wow these coaches and trust us, this is the NFL. We forgive shit. People out here beating their wives every other Lord day. Mercy. They're on teams every other year. Yeah. Right? Kareem Hunt, Tyreek Hill, still on teams. Yeah. Right? So it's like, we don't care as long as you ball out. Yeah. NFL is very clear about that. Right? We're going to do everything in our power to get you on a team. We've never done this before. All you got to do is wave your right to sue us after we give you the best case scenario to be on a team. That's a reasonable deal. Can't trust it if I'm Cap, though, man. I, hey, Cap, absolutely not. Yeah, I can't trust it. You know it who would Cap. take that deal in a heartbeat? Antonio Brown. Antonio Brown. Shit. Listen, what do you think he was apologizing for? 
because he wants to. Antonio Brown apologized. I'll work out. Antonio Brown I'll be there Saturday. Antonio Brown looked at the New England Patriots <laughs> on Saturday and Sunday and was like, he ain't got no more fucking receivers. <laughs> Josh <laughs> Gordon is gone. Brown is retired. Yo, the Patriots started with all the best receivers. They were talking about their receiving call. Brady's going to break all these records. They have no receivers Nobody. now except for Julian Edelman. Yeah. Antonio's like, Shit, fuck all that, King. Hey, Robert Kraft, I am sorry. I am ready to come back and work on that goddamn plantation. That shit hurt my heart, though. I'm not going to lie. Because he went so hard, man. Yeah, yeah. If you go, you can't go so hard and then come back like that. Yeah. You can't do it. Yo, this shit sounded crazy. Let me see. Do we why, have do you they, why do you think they what do it so emotionally? You said it. You just said it. But why do you think they operate when they're so emotional? Do you think that a lot of these guys are just young? What do we you, underestimate no, how their age? What you just said hit the nail on the head. Right. They are doing it emotionally. They're moving off of emotion yeah. and not strategy. That's why I always tell people, move off strategy and not emotion. Because when you move off emotion, you make a mistake. That's right. why... Therapy is so good. Mm. That's why your spiritual counselor is so good. That's why learning your breathing exercises is so good. Whenever you get those emotions, because those feelings are natural. I'm not telling you not to feel that shit because you will feel it. No matter what. But feel your feels. Yes. And when you feel your feels and you feel that anger, you feel that jealousy, that envy, yeah. that sadness, just feel it. Breathe it out. There's a uh, story. Then my make a decision. My buddy worked for... Um, my buddy uh, worked for, for a basketball team and uh, there was this player that missed this wide open jump shot to uh, win the game. And he was in the locker room and they were all about to leave. My buddy walked up to him. He's like, are you ready to go? He goes, uh, the player goes, um, no, nah, I just got to sit here and deal with this. He goes, what do you mean? He goes, I can't leave here until I've dealt with this. Cause when I leave here, I'm not going to be thinking about it anymore. And that was That's real. Yo, I really respected That's it. Real. He took the time. If it was an hour, if it was two hours, whatever it was, he took the time to go through all the fucking feelings so that when he left that that building, that was in the past. Right. Instead of, like I'm sure you and I have done and so many people listening right now have done is walked around the whole fucking day stewing upset about something, the trying day. to distract the week, the month. The week, yeah. the month, <laughs> years, motherfucker. What are you talking about? I'm stewing right now over a couple motherfuckers. Years. Okay, <laughs> years. <laughs> I know a couple of people not getting turkeys. That's right. <laughs> Listen, Antonio Brown <laughs> tweeted out, imagine conforming to a system, giving it 100% to see them treat me like this is unfairly, making money off my sweat and blood. Fuck the NFL. I'll never play in that shit. Treat black people the worst. Clear my name and go fuck yourself. Now, fast forward a couple weeks later, mm. I apologize, Mr. Kraft, <laughs> Mr. Mm. Kraft, not even Robert, Mr. Kraft, I apologize sincerely to you and your organization. All I wanted to be was an asset to the organization. Sorry for the bad media and the drama. Thank you sincerely, AB. Now, this is after he had a meeting with the NFL. He had a meeting with the league, was it this week or last week? He had a meeting about the, 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 the sexual assault allegations, I believe it was. Okay. So don't think for one moment this was not the conversation. You shitted on us. Now go out there and publicly motherfucking apologize. Oh, Come on, oh, man. Oh, so they hit him with a tap dance. Yes, they made him tap dance. That's what I'm saying. They said, hey, go. Listen. Wow. Cause, cause get, let's just look at the initial statement. Elite footwork. You com Exactly. You conform. Number one, you said, imagine conforming to a system, giving it 100% to see them treat me like this. You conformed, yeah. right? After saying they treated you unfairly, mm. making money off my sweat and blood, fuck the NFL. Until a brother says that and means it, y'all will always be in these positions. And then I'll never play in that shit, treat black people the worst. Mm. If you saw what happened with Cap this week, they're still doing that. Mm. Clear my name and go fuck yourself. Your name still hasn't been cleared, Tonio. Yeah. So what the fuck? I don't like seeing us in those positions. Cap and Nick Water Kunta Kente shirt, which I have. I love that shirt. Um, I wanted to shout out the brand just now, but I forgot the name. But you wore the Kunta Kente shirt. Mm. Kunta Kinte, two things with that. You're not a slave. You know what I'm saying? We got to stop doing that. We got to stop comparing. Can you give some background to who Kunta Kinte is? Kunta Kinte is from the movie Roots. You know and, what I mean? And yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to that, but just yeah. overall, you're not a slave. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You, like, we got to, we have to stop doing that. We have to stop, you know, coming up with these slave analogies when it comes to Dude, these positions that we're choosing. To be in. To be in. It's the same thing. Like we call everybody a Nazi. We call everybody a slave or yes. relate everything to slavery. It's like anytime it, 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 it's, I understand we're piggybacking on these horrific things yes. to bring attention to the thing that we're in, but it's really disrespectful to slaves 
and people who are victims Word of, of Nazis. I don't, I don't give a fuck about the respectability politics where y'all talk about, oh, you shouldn't have wore that. You should have dressed yeah. appropriately. Nah, fuck the NFL. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about my ancestors. Yes. All right? You're not a slave. That's number one. Number two, Kunta Kinte tried to escape the plantation four times. Mm. They cut his fucking foot off so he couldn't run no more. Mm. So if you're Colin Kaepernick, you shouldn't be trying to go back to the plantation. Yeah, unless you can say didn't try to work. Exactly. That. You yeah. shouldn't be trying to go back to the plantation unless you're going back to burn that bitch down. That's that. Period. It's, you can't call your, you can't, Kunta would have ran. Kunta would have saw that waiver and ran. Kunta would have saw that motherfucking take it or leave it and ran. It's, you know what I mean? He wouldn't even gotten, he wouldn't even want it to go back. No. If you feel it's such a racist and horrible institution, why are you fighting to be part of and it? I, and, I've, and I've felt that way for the past couple of years. I've, I've had these conversations with Cap. I've had these conversations with Nessa. I understand the sentiment of, you know, him wanting to play because this is something that he's been wanting to do since he was a little boy. You yeah. know, I, 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 I saw the letter that he wrote in fourth grade that was going to be the Nike ad. You know, it was a letter from his fourth grade self you know, saying how he wanted to play football. He wanted to play for the Packers, the Niners, talking about his size when he was a kid and how big he was going to be when he was going to get older. I saw all of that. I, I understand it. I didn't like the ad because, once again, I don't know why you're trying to pull at the heartstrings of these NFL motherfuckers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yo, it comes a point in time where you're not that little boy no more. Yeah. You're not that. You're not that. You're not that young man no more who wanted to play football. Your, desti your destiny is bigger than football. Yeah. Cap. Right. Like Cap has a chance right now to lead in a real way. And then I, and I said it on the radio and I said it here on the podcast. Mm. I don't care about Cap's NFL career anymore. It was a point where I wanted him, wanted it to because I know it would make him happy. Right. The reason I don't care anymore is because I will stick to the fact that I think he's bigger than football. And when it comes to activism, when it comes to him taking a stand against police brutality and the injustices that police are facing, at, uh, black people are facing at the hands of the police, I will stand with Cap all day on that. Mm. I will even stand with Cap. I was about to lie. My heart said that's not, you know, you wouldn't. Wait, wait, wait. I was wait. about to say I would stand with Cap if he boycotts the NFL. I would definitely still be sneaking to watch my Cowboys. <laughs> but publicly, I would publicly, I would say Fuck the NFL with Colin Kaepernick, okay? I was about to if lie. He, if, he, if he decided to boycott, because guess what? There's no other option at this point. If I'm Cap, I don't give a fuck about the league no more, and he shouldn't. Right. They tried to play him again. And as a black man, you got to look at that. Black players in the league, black players watching. Yeah. If everything that they're saying is true that happened this week, you have to to ask yourself some hard fucking questions. And the question is, do we really need the motherfucking NFL? Yes. Yes. It's good. I mean, it is good. Like, especially now, if you're a black man, especially now, you are what we were witnessing the rise of the black quarterback. Four of the MVP candidates are black, black males. Bro. Well, obviously males, right? But they're black guys that are killing it in the league. I mean, what an amazing year for the NFL. Matter of fact, it makes it that much harder for Kaepernick's case when the NFL is so like is so strongly promoting these four black yeah. quarterbacks that are absolutely killing it. Like this should have happened a couple years ago. If it did, if I a cap like Cap should have really been on some fuck the NFL. You see how they treating me as a black man. They're clearly trying to blackball me. You like that's when Eric Reed can use terms like sellout because he can say, "Yo, y'all are really sellouts if y'all allow this to continue to happen to mm -hmm. our brother." Because all it's gonna take right now is a few players. Imagine them guys you just named. Mm -hmm. Imagine those guys you just named. Well, I didn't name any, but I think we know who we're all talking about. Lamar Jackson, Lamar, Russell, Russell Wilson, Wilson, Patrick Mahoney, Mahomes. What's his name? Patrick Dak Mahomes, Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson. Yo, even Dak. Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott. Like, imagine. I mean, Cam Newton's not even playing. This is how great black cornerbacks have gotten in quarter. the NFL. Say again? Quarter. quarter. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What'd you say? You said corner. I, I thought I said quarterback. Mm -hmm. And this is how great black quarterbacks have gotten in, in the NFL, is that we're not even mentioning Cam. Cam has been out this whole season. We don't even know what's going on. We're not even missing him. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it is the greatest time in history for black quarterbacks. And 
Kaepernick is out here going, I deserve a job. They're trying to not give me a job. He can't even use the narrative, the narrative of they don't want black people to be quarterbacks because clearly they do. Bro, They're man. putting all the money into the black quarterbacks. This will never happen. But imagine if all five of those black quarterbacks said, we're not playing this week. This week, this Sunday coming up. If y'all did what y'all said, to, if, if if what happened, to, if y'all what's true, if what's in this waiver is true, mm -hmm. and y'all really did this to cap, we're not playing this motherfucking week. We still don't know if what's in the waiver is wrong to do to cap. That is true too. Some I don't know. some people might think it's a very fair trade. Yeah, that's true too. I mean, I, I saw. I, I saw, just think there's distrust between cap and the NFL, which is completely reasonable. So you can't assume the best case scenario and the best case scenario intent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So if you're cap, you have to go. Now nah, they're trying to fuck me. But they might literally just be in, be going, yo, this is the deal. Here's the thing, shows even if they were trying to fuck him, lawyer. Yeah, you have a lawyer. Well, I'm sure the lawyer, well, the lawyer told him. The lawyer was like, listen, this will remove your right to sue after the fact. Well, once you sign this, yeah, you can have this. Uh, you know, and you, you amend it. I'm sure they tried to push back. You redline that shit the fuck up. I'm sure they tried to push back. But you don't I'm send sure it back on a Saturday at 12.03 p.m. when your workout is that day. I'll be honest with you. My suspicion is Cap doesn't want to play. I, I don't think he wants to play. I think if he wanted to play football, there are other options for him. I'm sure he could have played in Canada in a heartbeat. Um, I don't think he wants to play football. And I think that that's fine because he's, you know, obviously doing way more for his community outside of football. But if he really wanted to play, if he truly loved football and mm -hmm. wants to play football, I think that he would have taken advantage of this opportunity, no matter how fucked up it seemed like not, it was I'm, from the NFL. I'm, I'm not going to go so hard. I'm not going to go so far. I bet say you it. if a team offered him a spot. I bet you if a team offered him a roster spot and if I was Roger Goodell and if I was, I would, I would talk to every single team in the league. I'd be like, please do me this favor. Please offer him a roster spot. If they, I guarantee he won't take it. I'm not going to go so far as to say cap doesn't want to play, but if he doesn't want to play and that's, that's what I thought Saturday, if he does if he does want to play, he's got a very strange way of showing it. That's what I thought Saturday. Right. But after getting more of this information, which I still don't know if the information is real because I've seen so many different shit. I've seen a waiver that Cap signed in 2011. That waiver doesn't look too much different from the one that he signed in 2017. Mm. But as I was telling people, even if that language was in the contract in 2011, it's a different ball game now. Cap has already sued them once. Right. And he may have to sue them again. I wouldn't give away that right if I was Cap either. Well, if you already sued once and then you got a settlement, right? Isn't that what a settlement is for? That's is the NFL's settling? fault, though. The NFL should have made it. Maybe the NFL should have cut him a big enough check to where, hey, you good, right? You can't just give him back pay for the past couple years. You know what I'm saying? So They should have cut him a check to where they made it to where we're done here. I thought that's what it was. Nah, nah, nah. He just got paid for the past couple He got paid back pay for the two years that he missed. And because... I mean, it's, it's wrong. Uh, they was it's, it's wrongful. It's employment discrimination. So, they settled a contract. They basically settled a lawsuit on employment discrimination. Yes. Right. Meaning he accepted an amount of money. Yes. To no longer sue them. No. For employment discrimination. I don't think he ever said that he would no longer sue them. I think I, 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 I'm, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I, I don't want to miss. I don't want to misconstrue that. Yeah, yeah. Because I can see people that know the story better than me yelling at the podcast right now. I don't know. I'm, I'm I truly just, know, just trying from to understand. What I knew, he sued for back pay. And, and and I and okay, let's say hypothetically. And again, neither of us know. And I'm truly mm -hmm. just trying to understand here. But you sue for back pay. The NFL goes. Listen, we're not going to admit that we didn't. We kept you out the league, mm -hmm. but we're going to pay you for back pay. He accepts the money for back pay. Now you can no longer sue, in my opinion, mm -hmm. now you can no longer sue for not being allowed to play because we already handled that and you accepted well, the money. Well, that's the NFL's fault. NFL didn't put that in the, in the, in the fine print clearly. Sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey sure. Yeah. And that's bad. Bad job by them. Yeah. And again, we could be messing this whole thing up. But it's also, wait, you're going to sue us again for the same thing we paid you for? Hey, seems like a if little... I'm Colin Kaepernick... Yeah. Go ahead, Alex. Um, so... I really think this was his way of speaking out because when he took the settlement, he had to do the NDA. Hold on a second. We got to turn on his mic. The mic. Oh, Go. So when he took the settlement, he had to do the NDA so he couldn't speak about it. And the fact, I was suspicious that the NFL settled because they'll never settle. They have so much money. They could have just 
kept going until he was bankrupt. Okay. So I think he, there was really something in that case. And so this was his way of balling out. Everybody sees it. And then if no team picks him up, that's like uh, f- proof for everyone that he's, um, they colluded to keep him out. Well, listen, man, I, was, I really think this was just his way of being able to speak without speaking. Alex, I don't think you're wrong, but my thing is this. I wouldn't be signing none of that shit. If there's something in the collusion case that exposes the NFL, then expose the fucking NFL. Yeah, you can't, can't love playing football that much. He hold on. can't me, say. He hold, can't on, say hold, on, hold on one second. So let, let me just but you don't got to go through with the case. Don't take the settlement. But, but, Find out what's in yes. the... Yes! You know what I'm saying? Don't take the settlement. <laughs> yeah, Let's just put like the, this. Blow the NFL up. Let's just put it like this. Al, let's say I stop you from coming on the road with me, filming the shows, etc. But I also stop you from filming anybody else's shows. I don't admit it, but I'm doing that. You sue me. I go, listen, I'm not going to let this go to trial because I did some fucked up shit, but fine. Here's the money for all the times that you should have been able to come on the road and film with me. You you see, you see, agree to take the money, it's over. Then two months later, you sue me for not taking you on the road. I'm like, motherfucker, we just settled this. I just paid you millions of dollars. Why are you fucking suing me? Yeah, but that's like if you said, I can't go on the road because I'm not good enough to be on the road. So it's like you're making a lie like, oh, nobody's keeping you out the league. We, you, we just don't want your talent. And so if you told me, hey, I'm not good, and then I, I fucking make a movie after and show the world I'm amazing, that's what I think he wanted to project to the world. No, show him how good he is. I understand what he wanted to. Yeah. What I'm saying but is- But he shouldn't have signed this out. I shouldn't it's some bitch to ass the, shit, to be honest with you, because the you NFL, just got the money. The NFL could have Captain bankrupted you. up, bro. Matter Say again? Matter yeah. of fact, Nessa going to swing on you. <laughs> talking some bitch ass shit. Listen, what I'm saying is this. Nessa going to swing on It you. is what it is. Oakland. It is what it is. Look, The here, town, baby. And again, it's, 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 I could be completely understanding this entirely wrong. 100% wrong, Okay. I feel like I've been very vocally supportive of Cap on the podcast, okay? But if you accept the money for the lawsuit and still want to retain the rights to sue for the same thing you accept the money from, that shouldn't be the thing that stops you from going to the audition, whatever the fuck, tryout. You already, if your ability to sue for the thing you already got paid for is the thing that stops you from trying out, you don't want to try out. If Why would you? If your ability for the... Right? If, if if your ability to sue, yes. and again, we could be wrong about this, but if your ability to sue for the same thing that you already got paid for after suing is 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 what you don't like about the contract, yeah. and I, that stopped you from trying out, you don't really want to try out, yeah. dog, because you already got paid for that. Uh, They're not going to pay you again. I think that's his insurance policy. Like, I would yeah. not... I would not relinquish my right to sue the NFL if I was Colin Kaepernick under any circumstance. But you already sued and agreed to take the money. And I might have to get y'all again. Yeah. I, I don't even know if there's legal precedent for that. <laughs> I, might, I he, might have to get you all again. He only but got paid for back pay. He got paid back pay. So if you keep me out another two years when I'm a free agent for no reason, y'all see I can play, y'all see I can ball, y'all see I'm in shape, I want a motherfucking play, and you still keeping me out the league? All right, let me hit y'all up again. I'm going to stay in y'all motherfucking faces. I'm going to stay up under y'all skin. But my thing is this. That's corny, bro. It comes a point in time. That's corny. You say you you accepted the money, bro. Like I'm sorry, dude. Listen, you, you accept the money, bro. There, that a money comes with a cost. A settlement comes with a cost. You got to settle. That's why it's called a settlement. It's not called uh here's whatever you want. It's yeah. called a settlement. Your wife goes, I want half, right? Yeah. You go, you get a quarter. Okay, we settle at a quarter. That's a settlement. Yeah. If I mean, after your wife gets a quarter, she comes to you and goes, I want the other quarter. You'd be like, if you, you don't but, get the but, fuck out of here. But you got to negotiate that, though. He did. No. They negotiated back pay for Colin Kaepernick. Right. And they clearly didn't think about what to do moving forward. Because they can't say, look, we're going to pay him in the future. We're going to pay him in the future because we really are trying to keep him out the league. They can't say that. So I can't pay you for the next five, ten years because that shows, look, we're really just paying you to fucking go away. That's a good point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so being that I can't pay you to say, hey, we really want you to go away, I'm just going to give you this back pay. So the NFL is so fucking stupid. I cannot, I can, that NFL law team could be, quite possibly, the stupidest group of lawyers Possible. that are connected to billionaires that I've ever seen in my entire life. Why the fuck did you not see this as a possibility? Why even settle something that you know can open right back up the second he walks out of there? Well, and you know what? Kudos to Colin's team for getting the NFL to pay him for something they're going to get him paid again. Colin's team might be the most brilliant lawyers who outsmarted these NFL people, and this, and this the NFL why, law team, this is why or whatever the fuck it's called. This is why the brilliant idiots 
is one of the best shows going today. Because in the span of 45 seconds, Andrew went from saying, fuck that shit, bitch ass nigga is corny to, oh. I didn't say the N-word. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't say the N-word. To, oh, that was brilliant. A lot I, I, I will react to what I understand. Yes, 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 yes. yes I yes, didn't realize yes. that Colin's team is setting up the NFL the whole time. Yeah, in a way, yeah. I just yo, yo, I thought the yo, settlement yo, was you're not allowed to sue us anymore after this. That's what I thought was that's why we're no, paying you. No, 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 no. Well, no, why no, the no. fuck would they agree to that? That is the stupidest because agreement I, I in the history you. of because, law. Because I'm paying you for back pay. If I give you more money than just the back pay, then I'm telling you, we don't want imagine I give you fifty million dollars and I say, Okay, you gotta sign this, but yeah, 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 you're you're never playing in the league again. You know what I'm saying? Like you relinquish your 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 rights to play in the NFL, whatever, whatever. I can the NFL can never say that. They can never do that because that proves we don't want you in the league. So the only thing we can do is pay you for the back pay. But you can put something in that settlement that says, hey, you can no longer sue us after we pay you. You can no longer sue us in the future for um job discrimination or blah. But it wasn't job, I think it was collusion. Or collusion, whatever it is. You yeah. can no longer you could put that, you could put whatever you want in a contract. Clearly, right? Yeah. But they did not put that in there. Or maybe Collins' lawyers were were smart enough to say, now nah, you can't include that. I mean, I just cannot believe the NFL would sign this. The NFL must be so monumentally fucked, and Colin must have such an incredibly strong case that they were willing to just do the back pay to get this, get this, get this court case out of here. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're like, hey, listen, we'll give you the back pay just to shut this thing down. There's too much positive momentum building for his side in this. Let's just shut this thing down. Here's the money. We know we're gonna have to deal with it again in the future. Well, let's well, talk. That's that's my point too. It gotta come to a point where somebody has to say "fuck the NFL" and mean it. And I don't think that there's nobody who can say "fuck the NFL" and really mean it more than Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reed because y'all got all the information. Y'all know what's in that motherfucking collusion case. So, what is your theory on Eric Reed still playing? I, I don't know. It, it, is I really there, don't. I mean, may, may, maybe I'm listen, not understanding. You got to you got to give you got to give a bone, right? Yeah. If, if I'm the NFL, all right. At least make sure Eric Reed is in the league. You know what I'm saying? Make sure Kenny, because a lot of people that kneel, make sure Kenny Steele is in the league. Dwayne Brown's great offensive lineman. He's gonna be in the league. You know what I'm saying? Like, make sure these brothers stay in the league, so it really doesn't look like we're colluding against everybody who took a knee. But that symbol, the guy with the afro, who they walking around with the t-shirts on when he's on people's t-shirts and shit, mm -hmm. the one they trying to make a martyr. Yeah, we gotta we gotta make sure he he's he stays away. But, but what, here's the thing: what is what is your theory about those players that say that the NFL is just like a racist, horrible place, yet still choose to I make a living there? I, I don't, I don't, I it 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 literally makes my skin crawl when I see Eric Reed say that. And I understand everybody got to eat, everybody make their money, but I can only speak from my perspective. I cannot see myself working at a place. Talking shit about that place, saying how horrible they treat my people, but continuing to work there. It is odd, right? I just, I, I, I'm just talking about me. Leonard Larry McKelvey, raised on a dirt road in Mount County, South Carolina, grew up right. in a single wide trailer, who's used to nothing. And you know what I'm saying? And even with three daughters, by the way, I put myself in a position where if something like that happens at one of my corporate, I only got one corporate check, to be honest with you. And that's, yeah. that's iHeart. You know what I'm saying? Everything else is based off things that I built for myself. Yes. Podcasts, the book publishers, like right. that's that all the, that I got real estate, like all that revenue Your money. coming in. Yeah. But I I did I positioned myself like that yeah. to never have to be in that position. To where I'm sitting at a place talking shit about a place and have to be there. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's and conforming to the rules, conforming, right? Conforming. You is can't he still taking a knee? I think he is taking a knee. But no, Eric, no, Eric, Eric definitely is. Eric definitely is. Are you Eric, sure he I'm doesn't positive. stay in the locker room now? No, no, no. Or something I, like that? I've, I've seen Eric on the on the sideline this season okay. taking a knee. But that's my thing. Conforming. What did Antonio Brown say? Imagine conforming to a system, yeah. giving it 100% to see them treat me like this is unfairly. I cannot sit in a situation and continue to conform. Now, let's bro. play devil's advocate here. It is easy for me, probably as a white guy, to go, well, I wouldn't do that. Because maybe there's a bunch of other industries that I could operate in, right? That mm -hmm. wouldn't be oppressive, mm -hmm. right? Now, Eric Reed might be going, okay, maybe I don't work in the NFL. Is the NFL the only racist organization out there? No, there's organizations with racists in it. 
chances are me getting a job at one of these places, there's going to be someone who racist. Can I never work in an environment that has any racist in it? When, when am I allowed to make a living? It's not like there's a black owned football. Um, what it was the word I'm Who says it got to be football organization? Football. What is it called? League. league. league yes. Uh, it's not like there's a black owned football league where he can go and he can feel, you know, safe working in that environment. So maybe he's like, no matter where I work, there probably are going to be at bare minimum, some weird racial implications in the hiring, right? Or the business practice, no matter where. I might as well make the most amount of money that I can possibly make and affect my community financially by working in this racist one. Listen, Maybe he's thinking I'm that. This is a hypothetical. I'm not mad at that. You can, be, you can be Robin Hood. You can rob from the rich and give back to the poor. You know what I'm right. saying? You can do that. Uh, I'm not even mad at, you know, playing your position until... You're in a position to not have to play that position no more. If I'm right. Eric Reed and I'm sitting there and I'm collecting my checks from the NFL while talking shit, cool. You know what I mean? Because when I retire, I know I done stacked up these millions and now I can really go back and affect my community. You know what I mean? But I just, when I see all of these brothers quoting Malcolm X, you see me. I keep the Honorable Elijah Muhammad around my neck. I got a Malcolm X piece too. Salute to uh, Mr. Flawless, Greg Union. You know what I mean? But, um, and I got Nipsey Hussle. Um, but when I when I when I see all of these brothers quoting Malcolm X, it's like, yo, do for self, build your own. Mm. That don't necessarily have to be a league. It'd be great one day if we did have a black, you know, football league. You know what I mean? That shit would be slapping. You know what I mean? It would struggle for the first few years, but right. eventually we'd get that money. You know what I mean? But in the meantime, <laughs> yeah. that shit don't mean just that. Yo, take that money that you're making and put it into other things to where you don't have to be in a position to be apologizing to no Robert motherfucking craft or flying down to Atlanta to, at the last minute, go do a workout someplace else. Like, how, I don't want to see that how from my brothers. How will history look back at this? Like, it is very clear how we've looked back at, um, you know, social justice and activism in history, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you see Rosa Parks. I'm, uh, I, I want to sit in this part of the bus, Right. They don't want me sitting as part of the bus. Well, I'm not getting up. I'm sitting as part of the bus, right? It would be weird if Rosa Parks was like, yo, the bus sucks, but also worked driving the bus and imagine kept if you, working uh, driving the uh, bus, imagine right? If, imagine if during that 360 plus days of the Montgomery bus boycott, when you was, you know, protesting the bus and boycotting the bus, you just saw Rosa in the window riding by <laughs> on the bus. Driving it. Not even riding it. What if she was driving the bus? You'd be like, what the fuck are we protesting out here? Right? It'd be like she's going to get her bus license. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like she's doing everything she possibly can to be a bus driver while protesting. It would. What I'm trying to understand is like, how will history look back at this protest compared to other ones? I think it will look back unfavorably. I think it will look back like... Why the hell were these guys telling us how awful the NFL is while continuing to work at the NFL and trying out to be in the NFL? It will be arguably one of the most confusing protests in history. It comes back to what I said earlier. Eventually, one of these brothers has to say, fuck the NFL and really mean it. And until somebody says that, they're going to continue to find themselves in the positions that the good brother Colin Kaepernick is in. And Antonio Brown is in. Simple as that. Like, somebody has to say, fuck the NFL and mean it. And there's nobody in a better position to say, fuck the NFL right now than Cap. Because if everything that, you know, is said, if everything is true that they said is true that happened this week, from the waiver being into the contract, you know, that, that made him relinquish his rights, to the NFL telling him to take it or leave it, mm. yo, at some point you got to tell these motherfuckers, leave it, Cap. Simple as that. Like, you, you, like these, you, these mixed messages got to stop being sent. You know what I mean? Because because I go back I to, to and, and, I, I, I don't know what to do. And this I, is yeah. we don't know what to do. And this is why I say, for me as yeah. a man, if Colin Kaepernick called me tomorrow and say, "Charlemagne, I want you to come do my do my Know Your Rights camp," I'm there. Mm. If Colin Kaepernick wants me to stand on, stand with him on the front lines of some any type of activism, you know, protesting against the the, the injustice that Black and Brown people face at the hands of the police, I am there. Right. But when it comes to the NFL and his NFL aspirations, I simply do not care. And the reason I do not care is because what he protested for initially never had anything to do with him not having a job. What he protested for initially was the police brutality that black and brown people were facing. Mm. I stand with you on that 
Colin Kaepernick all day fucking long. The past couple of years, the protest has turned away from the police brutality and it's went to Cap doesn't have a job and that's the injustice. Has, has it become selfish? Hmm. <clears throat> Selfish is an interesting word. I don't think Colin Kaepernick is selfish. I wouldn't use that word for Cap, but I would say... I mean, the most selfless, right? The guy's giving up millions yeah, of dollars. Right, he's Cam sacrificed giving up so dollars. much. Yeah, I, I, say, I think that when, you, when your Nike campaign is believing everything, even if it means sacrificing everything, you have to really feel that in your heart and you have to really know that you possibly could be giving up everything. And I think that a lot of times we say things like that in this generation, but we don't really mean it. Our ancestors really gave up everything. Cap gave up a job. Cap gave up a job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and by the way, he's 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 still gonna get rewarded handsomely. You know, he got like I said, he got the Nike deal, he got the the, the book deal, you know, he got the TV show with Ava. He got things going on. You know what I'm saying? He's going to be fine. So I wouldn't call him selfish. What I would say is it comes a point in time where you just have to embrace that model. And, and, and instead of saying yeah. everything, just say, I gave up my job. And, and when I think when you do that, you'll realize that this whole thing is bigger than you. Much bigger. There, I've been trying to like compare it to other things in my head right throughout history. And, uh, you know, we always bring up Ali when we're talking about Cap. And Ali had his title stripped, right? Mm -hmm. When he refused to join the army and fight in a war that he didn't think was just. And after he was suspended, I guess for three years it was? Three years, yeah. Three years. He came back and fought. Because they gave him his license back. Because they gave they him his license back. They reinstated his license back and I think it was New York. Okay. No, it wasn't New York at first. It was someplace else at first. Right. And then New York finally gave him his boxing license back. Now, so he did come back and fight, right? He didn't go, well, fuck boxing. Boxing's clearly colluding to keep me out. I mean, their dude did it openly. They were like, yes. yo, you can't fight. He came back and he fought. I can tell you, the, to me, I can tell you the primary difference of yeah, what yeah, I've seen over the past. I'm just trying to compare Ali, things. Like, how are we going to look at this when, in history? When, when boxing took away Ali's license, yeah. Ali hit rock bottom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he hit rock bottom. He was broke. Other fighters were giving him money and shit like that, which is something that we have, we do have to be prepared to do for our people. That's a fact. 100%. I don't give a fuck. When you see people make these kind of stands, you know what I mean? Yep. Even though I'm not going to ever compare, you know, the NFL blackballing somebody to, you know, him refusing to go fight in the Vietnam War sure. because he felt like, why would I go fight for this country that keeps suppressing us? Mm -hmm. Right. But Ali, for those three years, stood on the front lines of racial injustice in a real way. His whole shit was about how the Vietnam War was wrong, how uh, racial injustice that America is facing is wrong. He was rolling with the Nation of Islam. He was with Malcolm X. He was with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Like, Muhammad Ali was really an activist. Mm -hmm. Like, really an Like, really, really an activist on the front lines. So when it came time for, you know, the boxing license to come back three years later, yeah, I'm going to go back and I'm going to go do what I love to do. I put that work in as an activist and still put it in as a boxer. And that just what made that that's what made his legend even bigger. Like I think people feel like um Muhammad Ali was doing both at the same time. You know what I mean? He never <laughs> sacrificed the activism. Never sacrificed the activism. And and you're saying by being part of this oppressive ah he, Ali made them change. Ali yes. made them go, hey. I'm not going to do anything different and you're going to bend to my whim. And it can be said that maybe the people that are kneeling, et cetera, but yet still taking a check from the NFL are not bending the NFL. They're a matter of fact, bending to the NFL. That, that's why I wasn't tripping about the NFL agreeing to do this workout or agreeing to bring Cap back into the league. Right. Because it's the same thing with the Vietnam War. There was a change of heart. Mm -hmm. when, when Ali and... Martin Luther King Jr. and all those brothers first spoke out about the Vietnam War. People thought they were being unpatriotic and he, you know, he was draft dodging and all this other shit. But then a few years later, people realized that the Vietnam War was fucked up. It's the Vietnam War was was really bad. Charlamagne, everything's starting to fucking make sense to me now. Cap, even thank you, dear. Even if he doesn't want to play, Cap has to at least pretend like he wants to play. To support the collusion narrative. If he says, you know what? 
I don't really want to play football anymore. It was a Ooh. thing. It was a thing. But you know what? Ooh. The NFL soured my taste on it. I don't want to be in the NFL because it's a racist organization. If they say, if he says that, that's the NFL's dream. They're like, oh, he doesn't want to be here anymore. Done. We're out of here. He has to pretend like he wants to play. I think he wants to play though. Let's say he does. Let's say he I, does. Like your, I like you. I like your, I like your, uh, he, he, if he does or he doesn't, he has to put it out there like he wants to yeah, because yeah, yeah. the second he doesn't want to, the NFL's not colluding. You don't want to play. That's why you're not being hired. You have to say, I want to play. I've been ready for three years. Hey, look at these cameras. Look why at all not this show stuff. Up the, why not show up to Falcon Stadium, right? Right. Walk in the building. Yes. And when they come to you and be like, yo, you can't try out until you do this waiver. Stand there. And then when the media comes over, yo, my lawyer, tell him why we not working out. Tell him why we not working out. There's a waiver right here where they're trying to get me to sign my rights away that I can never sue them and collude against them and, and, and sue them for collusion ever again. Therefore, this whole shit is a dog and pony show. You could go. Do that shit in Falcon Stadium. He could say, this, this organization, the NFL, has been colluding for the last three years to keep me out of the league. Do you think for a second they won't edit the worst throws that I make Yes. In this entire tryout, yes. put them in one video and use that as a justification why no team should pick me up yes. and why no team will pick me up. You're out of your mind if I'm going to sign something that takes away my one bargaining chip with the NFL. My ability to sue them for keeping me out of the league. That's how you do it. Yeah. That would be the perfect and, and, conclusion. And, and, and if the NFL doesn't uh, allow you to have cameras in, go live on IG, baby. Right there. Right Boom. there. I'm, I'm here at Falcon Stadium. I showed up. Well, we won't be doing the workout today because there's this waiver in this motherfucking contract where they're trying to get me to sign my motherfucking rights away so I can't never sue them for collusion ever again. This whole shit is a dog and pony show. This whole shit was a Trojan horse to try to jam me the fuck up. If that's what's really in the waiver. Right. You know what I'm saying? If that's what's really in the waiver, that's how you handle that. Period. But uh, I'll put a button on this by saying I really, truly don't care if Colin Kaepernick plays in the NFL ever again because I believe that that good brother is bigger than football and I believe he stands for so much more and I believe that if the NFL is colluding against that man, if the NFL is treating black people bad like Antonio Brown says, it comes a point in time when somebody has to say fuck it and really, truly mean it. Like that's how you help. That's even how you help Jay-Z, right? Because Jay-Z is in there. And he's trying to help the brothers that's in the league. He's trying to help the players that's in the league. Somebody got to be Martin Luther King Jr. Somebody got to be the fucking Malcolm, Malcolm X and X. Stokey Carmichael and all of these guys that's on the outside raising hell. Yep. So you let the brothers and sisters boycott the league and say they standing with Cap and you have some players in the league start being like, man, fuck that. The way y'all doing Cap is wrong. We not playing this week. Meanwhile, Lyndon B. Johnson, a.k.a. Roger Goodell and these owners got to pick up the phone and say, Jay, what the fuck is going on? And Jay can do exactly what Martin Luther King Jr. was doing. Well, this, you is, this is what they shit. want. Yeah. That's how the fuck the shit used to go. It got to be an inside-outside game, baby. Yeah. That's it. Because there's certain things that someone on the inside cannot say and do, but those people on the outside can. Simple as that. Operators. You need operators. Simple as that. And by the way, Malcolm and Martin didn't see eye to eye. They didn't get along. Malcolm was always calling Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. and Uncle Tom and this and that. But Martin Luther King Jr. was on the inside, letting them raise hell on the outside. And if you go watch that King in the Wilderness documentary, Lyndon B. Johnson used to always have to call Martin Luther King Jr. and see what the fuck was going on. He's like, I gave them civil rights and I gave them the voting rights. Like, what more do they want? We want that check. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But the moral of the story is Martin was on the motherfucking inside getting yeah. shit done. And the way people was raising hell on the outside was making it easier for him to get those things fucking done. That's it. So, once again, somebody has to say fuck the NFL and mean it. Nobody better to do that than Colin Kaepernick. But if he says it. And continues to try to play and be a part count. of it. You, you, and no. if he says it, he can't get any more money out of them. No. They want, the NFL wants him to say fuck the NFL. As they should. Because the second he says fuck the NFL, then they don't got to no, worry yeah, about it. There's no more collusion. They can start saying, well, we offered him this and we offered him that. Yada, yada, yada. So now Cap is stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? He's, Not really. Well, well, in a way, right? It's, and let's move on. But he's, he's essentially stuck between, <laughs> he's stuck between, the Know Your Rights campaign and and being an activist oh, for police brutality. Oh, he's between being an athlete and an activist. Right, but he's he's so that's what's incredibly important. And he's and he's stuck between his situation with the NFL, which he literally can't stop wanting to play for the NFL because then the NFL gets what they want. 
So it's a, ri- but then by wanting to play for the NFL, he has to play for the exact oppressor he's trying to fight against. It's a really tricky situation. It's really not if you just say fuck the league. <laughs> the second you, he says fuck the league, so what? Why would you want it? Why we just go back to what we said earlier? That's where the money is. He can make money. He can sue him and yeah, make money. Cap can make money being cap. At this point, Colin Kaepernick can make money being cap. Right. He, you think the trap two pay booming now? Wait till uh, they come out with that Colin Kaepernick Nike edition. That fro. All right. You think Tory Lanez and Envy and all of them out there with they fresh shit now. When they come out with that Colin Kaepernick Nike edition, yeah. and you can just scrap that afro on for a ball, man. Shit. And get it corn roll when you want. Shit. Well, moral of the story is, uh, yeah, man. Salute to Colin Kaepernick. Salute to Nessa. Love y'all. And everything that went down this week, if they say that it's true, Yes, yeah, somebody has to say fuck the NFL and really, truly mean it. Because I ain't going to front. I go through mad emotions with this shit. I go through emotions where I'll be like, what the fuck, Cap? Stop that clown shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then I go through emotions where I'm like, well, if that's if that's the waiver happened, then yeah, it's true. But my biggest thing is fuck working for your oppressor. Right. If you're going to wear the Kunta Kente shirt... Run! Yeah. Run! Yeah. And the Kunta only time you should be going back to the plantation is to burn that motherfucker down. Yeah. That's it. And I got to go pee. Well, I'll pay some bills. Other than your absolute best friends, who could you ask to bring you red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., and a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m.? I'll tell you who Postmates. Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever you can think of delivery service all year round. No more trips to the store. You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything to you. You go download the app for iOS or Android. It's free. You got to browse local restaurants, businesses, track your delivery, the whole nine yards. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, Postmates will bring you what you want within the hour. Anything, literally anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the known universe with more than 25,000 partner merchants so for a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. I will say that again because it's very important. That's free money. $100 free. You got seven days to use it. You start your free deliveries. You download the app right now and use the code IDIOTS. That's code IDIOTS for $100 free dollars of free food delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. That's how confident they are that you're going to love this and continue using it. They're so confident that you're going to love and continue using it. They're willing to give you $100 worth of food. You got to get anything you need, anytime you need it. Download Postmates and save with code IDIOTS. This episode is also brought to you by um, Honey, guys. Giving holiday gifts is is great. Uh, Overspending on those gifts is definitely not. So why spend more than you have to? Finding the lowest price is easy if you have Honey. Okay, so... Honey is a free browser extension that automatically finds the best promo codes whenever you shop online. I cannot explain how brilliant this is. It basically searches the whole internet to find you discounts, okay? They get you the deals without even trying. Over 20,000 sites, Amazon, eBay, J.Crew, Sephora, Expedia, Target, Best Buy, and more. Honey has found it. Uh, its users... Over 10 million members, by the way, over a billion dollars in savings. If you're buying gifts this holiday season, then you need honey. It's a no-brainer. You just get things cheaper. Why would you not want things cheaper? It's so simple. You just get things cheaper. If you're not, you probably know somebody who is using it, all right? Um, You just do them solid. Tell them about honey. Honey can help make sure that you're getting the best price for whatever you're buying. It's free, by the way. Why You have to pay $0 to save money. I don't know how else to convince you if that isn't convincing enough. You pay $0 and then you make money. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash idiots. That's joinhoney.com slash idiots. One second. Get your balls right, okay? Make sure your balls are shaped up beautifully. Look at this Manscaped razor right here. This is for one thing. It's not to trim your mustache. It's not to trim your beard. It's to put this thing on right here, clip that up, and then boom. You're going to get your sack and you're going to get your bush looking beautiful. Mm. All right? That's what we want to do. You can't be out of here bushy. clean balls, King. Bro, you got to have the clean balls. You had Look at this right here. Manscaped. I look like a... Dude, of course. Look at that. That's if you want to have like that little Scotty Pippen. So do I got to put the cream? 
The cream comes after they got the ball deodorant because you know your shit is woofing, especially you go down south. Bro, I'm trying this. And the reason I'm trying this, and I, I've been telling y'all for the longest, I really don't want no hair on my balls. I don't want no hair on my pubes. I really don't. We got to get rid of it. I do, you don't I, want I, any I envy women with the ball vaginas, yo. I don't want nothing. I think we got to start doing this. This is nonstop. Maybe yeah. we even look into a laser situation. Manscape. Listen, you can't hurt yourself because they got this clip on. It's guaranteed. Anyway, yeah. manscaped.com. Use our promo code. Make sure you go get it. Peace. What else you want to talk about, man? You did you see the whole situation with uh, Amanda Seals and Sean King? That was over. No, the, tell me over the Rodney Reed thing. Tell me what's going on. That's why I didn't get into the Rodney Reed thing. But but uh, I didn't get into the Rodney Reed thing just because I didn't know what the fuck was. I didn't see. I didn't get into the Rodney Reed thing just because I didn't know what the fuck was going on. This is what happens. Okay. This is this is what I've noticed. What always happens, right? Mm -hmm. Is with these with these stories is. People care less about the person than they do about the issue at hand, mm -hmm. right? And that's why the stories tug at our heartstrings. Everybody, at least everybody black, has known a black person has probably been lied on by a white woman in regard to rape. Well, that's really specific. And but, uh, <laughs> I can't say I know that, listen. but has been treated unfairly by the justice system. And that has, say that. by the way, that has, that has historical context. Sure, sure, of course. This Emmett is Taylor, Emmett Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. But, but, but we all know a black dude that's been pulled over for no reason. Shit, uh, Alex and I are on the way back home from, um, from the shows in Boston. You know, Alex has got a Tesla. The guy pulls us over and there's a car going faster than us in front of us that we're trailing. And the guy pulls us over, literally just to ask questions about the Tesla. Doesn't even give Alex a ticket. But I was like, what do you think that was about? He goes, hey, he saw a black guy driving a Tesla. He just No, he saw a black guy not driving a Tesla. He was like, how the fuck is this nigga sleeping? <laughs> and the fucking car is driving by his goddamn self. Let me pull it. Let me see what the fuck. I saw the video. Maybe it's a good thing we got pulled over. Exactly. <laughs> we were, we were sleeping while driving a Tesla. I pulled you over too. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Anyway, I Where y'all was at? <laughs> we were driving back from Boston. <laughs> They're not used to that shit. Yeah. In the middle of them back roads that time of night. <laughs> we used to black people sleeping, but not driving air. Driving air sleeping? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? So, so, uh, so basically, Basically, what happened was, I, I think a lot of people go, okay, injustice uh, right here. This is the, you know, the court system not treating black people fairly. I, this resonates with me. Let's take interest in this case. We're not even going to look at the case at all to see if there's any kind of nefarious behavior with this guy because everything else adds up to our lives and the issues that affect it's us. another element too. Boom, go. Death penalty. You know what I mean? Some yes. people don't believe in the death penalty. Yes. You know, so anytime that there's an innocent person on death row, they will attach themselves to that story and that situation just right. because they don't believe in the death penalty. Right. It's a larger political agenda. Right. Yes. Right. So so anytime, you know, these kind of larger political agendas get like tied into shit, it's very easy to like draw up a storm of people, especially angry people online that feel a certain way about it. Every time a baker doesn't want to bake a cake for a gay couple— all of a sudden, you have all like the right wing, like super religious folks going, well, they have freedom of expression and not bake their cakes. And then you have the left wing people going, well, we shouldn't be discriminated against. It happens every single time. So I, I don't get very invested in the headline because I know some other shit's going to come out a week later. And it seems like that's what came out with the Rodney Reed thing. Well, no, not even a week later. I mean, I didn't know anything about Rodney Reed on Saturday. Um, a few sisters I know started hitting me up. And they just was asking me what I know about the Rodney Reed case. And I said, well, I, I don't know anything. I just know what I'm seeing and that, you know, he, he seems to be an innocent man on death row. I don't really have an opinion about the death penalty one way or the other. But, of course, if this is an innocent man on death row, you know, right. then, then, then he should A man innocent he, of the crime he's accused of. Accused of. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. I didn't know that. In my mind, right. I thought he was a brother who got accused of raping this white woman that he was in a consensual relationship with. And he's been on death row all of this time for it. That's what I thought. I didn't right. know anything else about Rodney Reed. But then I start getting all of these, 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 these. They sent me a new. They sent me a news report from I think it was a KBUE in Texas. They sent me a news report that came out a week before, and then they sent me stuff like you know the young woman's sister saying it was a headline that said with no, with no doubt Rodney Reed murdered my sister. But they just sent me a, a sent me wreck. Like if you read any of these articles or you watch that news report. They talk about his alleged history, and I say alleged, his alleged history yeah. of violence against women. Like, he just has a lengthy criminal file full of accusations of sexual assault. Like, it was a, an assault, a, assault on it. And I'm only, I'm reading this verbatim. It's from uh, uh, CrimeOnline.com. 
uh, including assaults on a 12-year-old girl, uh, his disabled girlfriend, a woman named Caroline Revius, uh, and the mother of his children, Lucy Epper. There's it's, a lot. It's a lot. All I'm saying, yo. Which nobody looks into because they don't really care about Rodney, right? What they care about is the issue at ha hand. And Rodney just fits the bill right now. And whoever fits the bill, we fake care about. But we don't really care about these people. And that's how Rodney's representatives get to manipulate the public through social media because they play on the heartstrings of these issues that are already exist inside you. And, and, and listen. It's just politics. That's Amanda, what they're doing. Amanda Seals, y'all know I love Amanda. That's, that's, that's family. People swear I'm so biased towards Amanda. I can only be objective. Amanda was wrong when she said that Rodney Reed uh, was arrested and charged for rape and murder in Wichita Falls. There was no murder, mm -hmm. but he was charged with rape. Mm -hmm. That's when he was in high school, mm -hmm. right? When he was in high school, he was charged with the rape of this young lady. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, when, they, when, they, when, they, when they picked him up, they asked him, did he know the young lady? He said, no. And then they said, well, your DNA is all over her. And Rodney goes, well, we did have sex. According to the court documents, yeah, we did have sex, but she wanted it. Rodney was acquitted four years later of this case, right? Yeah. Now, the reason Amanda could get that story confused is because that's exactly what, you know, uh, was said in the case of, what's her name? Stacy Stacey Stites, I think yeah. her name is. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what happened in that case. In that case, young lady was found. Hey, do you know this woman? No, I don't know this woman. Well, your DNA was found in her vagina. Oh well, yeah, we used to have a secret consensual relationship, so it right. wouldn't be kind of too hard to get that those stories mixed up, especially when there's like four other stories as well. Like right, you got the story of the twelve year old girl, and by the way, I don't know if any of this stuff is true. The only thing I'm doing is reading this to get to the larger point. It says that uh, Reed had raped his intellectually disabled girlfriend. How do you um, even have an intellectually disabled girlfriend? I have no idea. But it's it's, it's a given the similarities between these crimes, law enforcement inquired not a crime. with DPS. Is that not a they, crime? Can you just date intellectually disabled people? I don't know, man. There's got to be some rules against that. They said they inquired if they had Reed's DNA profile on file. They did because Reed had raped his intellectually disabled girlfriend. Reed's DNA profile was compared to the foreign DNA inside and on Stite's body. The two were consistent. Yeah. Next was a 12-year-old girl who was home alone, having fallen asleep on the couch after watching TV. When she woke up, someone began pushing her face into the couch and had blindfolded her and gagged her. I'm not going to read everything that happened, but basically the foreign DNA from this young lady's rape kit was compared to Reed. Reed was not excluded, and only one in 5.5 billion people would have had would have the same foreign DNA profile from AW's rape kit. Um, Point being... Uh, hold on, there was, another, yeah. there was another one. There was another case where... Uh, and this young lady picked Rodney Reed out of a lineup. She There's said, a bunch. She said she gave Rodney Reed a ride... And Rodney Reed got in the car. Rodney Reed tried to get her to take her down the dirt road. She said, said Rodney Reed, when she wouldn't go, Rodney grabbed her head, slammed her head into the, the steering wheel. She asked Rodney what he wanted. Rodney said, a blowjob. She said, you're going to have to kill me. Rodney said, I guess you're about to die. They fought a little bit. She got away, went to the police, ended up picking Rodney Reed out of the lineup. The moral of the story is this. If somebody has this kind of Pass. history, yeah. It should be made known to the public, especially if you want people to rally around this person because they're on trial or about to get the death penalty for a sexual assault case in murder. Like, because I believe that if more people would have known that he had this kind of history, they wouldn't have been so quick to repost and rally around this man they wouldn't at on all. social media. They wouldn't at all. I mean, and, I mean that, and that was Amanda's larger point. That's all she was saying. But Amanda was one of the people that posted initially. She did. Exactly. And that's, so, what she, and that's, that's why she said what she wished she would have known well, then just before Google she got it. involved in the Rodney hey, Reed case. Google. That too, my brother. Don't go out here and be like, I wish we would have known. Don't wish. Do. I'm with you. It's like so easy. Because like, here's the thing. You're not a brilliant idiot. You you choose to be one of these people that's like an activist and advocating on behalf of people. and go, Once mm -hmm. you put that cape on, once you put that cape on, that's what people see you as. But you know what? There's a responsibility for that cape. We don't have, but by the way, we don't. I don't wear a cape. You don't wear a cape. We're just out here talking shit on brilliant we, is. It's different. But we still can't be irresponsible. 
Yo, that's why when I when I, when I that's why when, when I talk about the Rodney Reed case, I say go look at the KVUE report. I say go look up articles yourself. I cited an article. Uh, I think it was CrimeOnline.com mm-hmm. that I cited. They did an interview with his sister. I want y'all to go to see information for yourself because I don't know if none of this shit is true or not. All I'm simply saying is you got to be the most unluckiest black man in in America <laughs> if, <laughs> to if, have six rape cases from six different white women, or the luckiest to get away. Shut the fuck up. Yo, he got <laughs> away with so all of them. He got this away. So he didn't even go. This what's is the le- this the guy? final <laughs> one. The fuck's wrong with this guy? With the final <laughs> one, he got a, he got away with every single one, and the final one is where he's. And even now, after the final one, you still got people going. He's innocent. Like you're the luckiest. What's wild is even after the so called final one, when they, I think when they, he 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 had like six months later, he was the suspect in another one. Yo. There's some wild shit going on here. Here's the tricky thing also, which is if he didn't murder this woman, right? He shouldn't get the death penalty. He shouldn't get the death penalty. Now, what we do is something that has been used against black people in trials all the time, which is, hey, look at your past, right? What has happened? Look at your past. Look how messed up his past is. He must have done this other thing he's accused of, right? Which I also disagree with Amanda about. Because don't go out here and say, hey, maybe he did do it because he did all these things in the past. Because well, that's what white people have been well, doing, doing well, to put black people in jail for I, years. I know, I, I know this is one of those times where people are going to say I'm defending Amanda. If you look at the case of Rodney Reed and the young lady, the reason like that they, they, they say he's not getting the death penalty is because of uh, fuck-ups on the prosecutorial side. The evidence is pretty much there. They found his semen in her vagina. They found but they had a consensual they relationship. His, they find his semen in her vagina, her anus, and on her breast. You know, there's another aspect to this case where, like, the girl's husband, husband. Yeah, is yeah, a yeah, cop. Yeah, the cop. Yeah, yeah. He, he, and he went to jail for 10 years for some type of sexual assault charge and, and something or some shit like that. Two things in this case. Uh... <laughs> Son. No, I'm serious. Son. Like, this is a lot, bro. Like... There's two things in this case, bro. Like, it's a lot. Like, first of all, Rodney Reed got to be the most unluckiest black man on the face of the earth. Yeah. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, R. Kelly and Bill Cosby got to be sitting around somewhere like, so y'all not believing multiple accusers no more? Like, niggas Yo. passed on me and shit no more? Like, what the fuck? Like, and this this DNA evidence linking to these people, I just had hearsay she say in a tape. And some songs. I'm just, but whatever. I'm just, I'm just saying. The like, question is, do we use people's pasts against them or do we not? Right? Because here's a first. Not in the court of law. Well, well, we do it all the time. Well, yeah, you do do it. Think you about it. Man. Because if there's a girl accusing someone of rape, right? What is the first thing the defense does? Well, this girl did some slutty things over here. And this girl did some slutty. Yeah, what is yeah, the first yeah, thing yeah, we yeah, say yeah. about Kobe's accuser? What's the first thing we say? Well, you know they well, said she that she had four hundred different types of semen in her pants. They said that on the K, on, on the KVUE report, which y'all should go watch. One thing that stood out to me was when I guess was, was the prosecution of defense. Who's defending Rodney Reed? I don't fucking know. But one of them defense they, defense. They, they, they was like, look, the, her her boyfriend was a cop. He went to jail for ten years for doing something else to another woman. And so Rodney Reed people said, well. Y'all can't bring that shit. No, his people say, well, y'all can't bring this shit up if y'all not bringing up Rodney Reed shit. That's what they say. Reasonable. Yeah, his, his team said, you can't bring this shit up if y'all not bringing up Rodney Reed Put shit. it this way. This is just the worst case for anybody to try to take a political stance on. Just it's say, a shitty case. You just don't have, you don't have to care about every single case. Okay? You don't have to make your political stand about every single case. Because let's be honest. None of you really give a fuck about Rodney Reed. Let's really be honest. You care about the bigger issue at hand. It's a bigger we, political agenda. Exactly. That's what you care about. And you know what? You should care about that because that could affect you. Yes. You get arrested. You get arrested, Taylor. You get arrested, Alex. You should care about what happens. I and mean, the, we've seen it, Alex, go through it in fucking Sweden. The right? only the only thing we care about, uh, me, and I know Andrew does too, is, bro, you got to keep some form of consistency. And it is very inconsistent that I hate when y'all figure out nuance when y'all want to. When you want to. <laughs> I can't stand that shit. I can't stand because any other time y'all are taking shit that don't got nothing to do with nothing to put together and say, look, let's look at this. Look at this. He yeah. did it to me. Yep. You, you grab this audio clip and that audio clip. Yeah. Like, so. And then you I almost you made to, it my fault. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't want you to keep that same goddamn energy. That's all I'm saying. How do y'all understand nuance this is in this the, situation? Because guess yeah, what? Go. Rodney Reed probably did not kill 
the woman Stacy, whatever. Yeah, but, but if he did all that other shit, he should be killed. In how, my opinion, and yeah. how and how can you not say this guy? You can how, kill rapists, in my opinion. Death yeah, penalty, of course, hundred yeah, yeah. percent. And 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 stay in, in the case of when he got locked up in high school, he used the same excuse, right? He was like, "Yo, it was consensual, right?" But he got acquitted. So respect to him on that. Right. But if years later. You got all of these different accusations and you use that same excuse for somebody else. You don't think nobody's going to look at you funny? That's all I'm saying. You are. And and listen, it, it is. It's just, so what was the beef between Amanda and, and Sean? Well, Sean is, 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 is uh, Sean, to me, led the charge for Rodney Reed. You know what I'm saying? So I think that whole social media activation that happened uh, was 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 a lot of, was a lot of Sean King. You know, Sean King brought a lot of attention to it. Sean King is great at that. He brings awareness to a lot of things. And Amanda just got on Instagram and we don't got it. It was long. It's like yeah, we don't have to play it. But oh, okay, we can play it then. Uh, um, and and uh, Amanda's got on there and just was basically like, "Look, if I would have known these things, I don't think I would have rallied around him in that way." And Amanda gave out some wrong information because she said that the guy uh, Rodney Reed had raped and killed someone right. in Wichita Falls. Sean was like. She wasn't killed. She's very much alive and well. Yeah. But she was raped. And once again, if you got all of these different accusations and right. somebody's trying to explain it, I can easily see how Amanda would get could easily get caught up and say that. Sometimes she gets wrong information, right? Like she yes. thought she was invited to that after party. Uh Oh, shut up. <laughs> you know I mean, listen, listen. She be mistaking shit. You listen, know what I mean? Sean, I thought I was on the list. Listen, Sean gave, Sean gave out wrong information too, though. I thought I was on the list. I thought he raped and killed her. Well, I mean, you know, potato, potato. Listen, Sean, Sean gave out wrong information too because Sean said that Rodney Reed has never been arrested or convicted We've never been convicted, but he's been arrested, right? He's been convicted too. Oh, I didn't know he was convicted. Of he's what? Convicted. He's on death row now. <laughs> he's been in jail for twenty oh, years. I thought this was prior to this. So, Sean, thought... but Sean said he's never been arrested or convicted uh, for a violent crime against a woman before or after this murder. Sean, he's in jail right now. Oh, yeah, but he's because of this crime. Yes. So before that, he was never convicted for one. But I think, I think still, that's yeah, accurate. But, yeah. well, I don't. I don't. I don't know. The way he worded it sounded kind of kind of off to me when I heard him yeah. say it but either way my, the yeah. moral of the story is I mean this. Sean's got one agenda we know that right it's, and it's a it's an agenda that uh, has a ton of importance um, but you can get things wrong it, and he he's he's blind to things that do not support the agenda so when you go when Sean is putting something out there you know exactly who he's supporting who he's fighting for mm -hmm. and he will give you all the information on the side of who he's fighting for and none of the information on the opposite well, side they, some people are saying Sean did I didn't see it I got this information from people sending it to me I asked Sean about it mm -hmm. uh Sean told me he didn't yeah. know what kind of man Rodney Reed was or is his yeah. job is to bring light to this case he feels this man is innocent in this case. This man should not be executed for this case. Right. I, I have no problem with that. Right. I don't. I have no problem with that. But I'm not going to sit out here and try to defend Rodney Reed. I don't know, you know him. You know what it's like? I don't know if he really did these things. This was like, you know how they like arrested El Chapo? There's probably some like deal that they got him on or some shit mm -hmm. like that, right? There might not be enough evidence to convict El Chapo for that single drug deal. Mm -hmm. But you know he's done a bunch of drug deals. So he's not the person that you launch some campaign yeah. about how, you know, uh, Mexican Mexicans are, are being targeted as drug dealers when they're da, 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 right? You just go... All right, this is the one. This isn't the one we fight for. We're just gonna kind of look the other way with this shit. Yeah, you know, blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And that's the situation with this. We all were up in arms, and everybody was tweeting. And fucking Alex signed a petition. Yeah. Didn't even look into the petition. You know how many people signed that petition? I didn't sign shit. You know I didn't sign shit because I didn't have no. Right. I didn't have no information on it. Not saying that I wouldn't have, but right. I just didn't have any information on it. And I can't just go off, you know, because they come to us all the time. We public figures. Like, yo, can you repost this? Can you repost that? If I haven't done no information on it, no, no. I'm not just taking your word for it. I don't care who you are. I got to know what the fuck is going on. And after you tell me what's going on, I am going to go do my own individual research. And guess what? I still might get it wrong, mm -hmm. depending on what what sources I go to. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So I, I don't. I listen. I don't have a dog in this fight. All I'm simply saying is the overall. To me, the overall point Amanda was trying to make is do your research. That's what she said. She said it. She was like, "Yo, do your research." 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do your inform- do, go go get further information before we just jump on these causes. You know what I mean? I don't think it's a problem with that. And my other my other aspect is just a pro- <laughs> it's not a problem with it, but it's it's just hilarious that like she should do it. Like, why am I taking your advice on a thing that you didn't do? You're right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But <laughs> she she had, but you see that's another thing we do. She had one part wrong. Literally. Right. One part wrong. She said rape and kill. It's like ordering a Big Mac and fries. I forgot right. to say the fries. If I pull up to the drive-thru and I ask you for a goddamn number one, do I really have to say I need fries with that? Right. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, but that's the second time she had one part wrong. The first time around, she's like, yo, we need to support Rodney Reed and people should be out here looking up for Rodney Reed, this, that, the other. You learn from your mistakes. I respect that. Uh, hey, 100%. Yeah. I agree with the sentiment. Yeah. 100% agree with the sentiment. Yeah. You know, it is it is, uh, it is important that we all do our research if we want to be in those positions, Right. Yeah, man, but you know I what? don't care to be in that position. I'm not. I, what I like to do is make jokes. You know the crazy part about those positions? What's that? If you put yourself out there and you're one of those, you know, social justice warriors, activists, whatever, you're going to get it wrong sometimes. You're going to get a Tawana Bradley, bro. At some point, you're going to get a Tawana Bradley. Remember Tawana Bradley? Who's? That was Reverend Al Sharpton. Remember Reverend Al Sharpton came to the defense of the young lady who said she got, and then she said she got raped, uh, by by uh, lacrosse team or some shit like that. Jesse Smollett. Nah, not even Jesse Smollett. Yeah. Like the, well, I guess maybe Jesse, but like he, he Rev and I came to the defense of this woman, but it came to find out she was lying. Yeah. Sometimes you're gonna get those. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think anybody's lying in this case. I just think that it was some information omitted because at that point in time, they didn't want to slow up the process because they knew that this man was about to get executed in a couple of weeks and they needed all hands on deck on social media. So they put out the information that was pertinent to this case. You know what? You are right about that. You are going to get things wrong. Yes. And we can't crucify people, Amanda, Sean, for getting things wrong. Especially if, when you know that... Talk about if history, right? If the record is right. That's all I'm saying. If, if, if the record That's is... That's all I'm saying. Yeah. If the record shows that for the most part they're right and their intentions are good... Sean and Amanda are always trying to be on the right side of history. Right. You may not always agree with them. You may not always think they're on the right but side. But their intent is to be in the right side. So we have to... We always say this on the show. Judge people by then their intent, not your interpretation. So I will give that. Yeah. I will... I'll concede that. The intent was good. You know? What heavy. Else? Did we do Postmates? Yeah, I did them both. You heavy. did Honey too? I did uh, Honey. I did Postmates. Okay. Now now we just got the, the Let's hymns. Let's do hymns. That's, okay. your, that's your lane since that's you've been using shit, it. baby. Let's go. Guys, the best way to prevent more hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some. <laughs> Charlotte. <Shut> so <laughs> this Black Friday, secure the best deal of all. A healthier Thicker hairline with 4 Now, the active ingredient in hems is this thing called finasteride. I've been using finasteride for the last 10 years. If you look at my hair, it looks sensational. And I'll be honest with you, um, the one indicator if you are aging well in life is, as a man is if you have a full head of hair. You want to be a, um, a gracefully aged individual. Keep that hair if you can. For hymns, you go there, you get it, you take that finasteride, and you are going to keep it. In my case, some actually grew, grew back. I take it every single day. This is no snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. This is the real deal. Matter of fact, the way they found out about this, this was like um, a liver medication or some shit like that. It was like cancer patients who had like liver cancer or something. I, f- I forget exactly. Some sort of like cancer. And um, they were giving them this this pill at a higher dosage uh, to like help cure the cancer. And then all of a sudden, all these cancer patients started growing back their hair when they never had any at all. So they're like, oh my God, I think we're on to something. Try him today by starting out. You get a free online visit. That's forhims, F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash B-I. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval, of course, and require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See the website for full details, safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to an in-person doctor's office and remember, but just remember, forhims.com slash B I. Okay, let's get back to the show. Is there something fun that we can talk about? Something light. I mean, we can run through I, I need all, something light. I thought bro. all those topics were light. Oh, they're so <laughs> heavy. <laughs> those are heavy to you. Oh God. Come on. It's been a brilliant thing for five years. Yeah, but it was just so heavy. Come on. 
so okay, heavy. we can run through some of Taylor's topics. Kanye West calls himself the greatest artist that God has ever created at Joel Osteen's service. I don't have a problem with this. Talk to me, bro. Like, why would anybody have a problem with a person saying they're the greatest artist God has ever created? I think I'm the greatest radio personality God has ever created. Why should I not feel that way? You don't think you're the now, greatest? Now, the greatest artist that God has ever exist, uh, created is now working for him. What's the problem with that? What am I missing here? Yeah. Why are people up in arms about that shit? Let me ask you a question. Yes. This is a good question. What songs, there are songs that uh, were written 50 years ago that we all still know the words to and sing that we did not grow up with, but we know the words and we sing them, mm -hmm. right? Songs written 100 years ago that we probably do that too. There are songs like classical music that has existed for, I don't know, 300 fucking years. I don't know how long ago Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, all these guys are. What song of Kanye is going to last for another 40 years? Oh, man, that's a bunch of them. Which? Hell yeah, Which? bro. I mean, shit, you can go back. I mean, what album you want to go to? You can go to the college dropout album, and you can, Give me grab, the song. You can grab Jesus Walks. You can grab Spaceship. Nobody even plays grab, that shit now. You crazy. Them shit be slapping. Jesus grab, Walks, nobody you, playing. Uh, um, what, what's the shit with the fucking, when it all falls down? Motherfucking, you can go... Gold Digger. I, I love the Diamonds of Sierra Leone remix with Jay-Z. I listened to that. I was listening to that shit this morning. Isn't Gold can, well, isn't Gold Digger a a uh, a sample? So that's not even his song. It's yeah, someone else's song. Though. The grab Jamie Foxx at that time when Jamie Foxx was playing Ray and to do that shit sure, over. Sure, sure. But what I'm saying I love is We Major by Nas. Let me tell you something. We can say a lot of things about Kanye West, but one thing you can't say about him is he's not a talented motherfucking No, man. no, I'm not saying he's not talented. There's been plenty of talented artists and musicians throughout time who have like ruled the the music world who will be forgotten. Their music just won't carry on. Like Not Kanye. Definitely I, not Kanye. I don't think Kanye's music will be Kanye has the best, remembered in 40 years. Kanye has the best in album. In our lifetime, we won't even think about Kanye. Kanye has the best album of the decade. That's fine. Dude, Guns N' Roses was on top of the yes. fucking world. Huh? Metallica that's on top of the world. That's because you're a midget, no, Taylor, and, and you have a short-term memory. <laughs> Past decade. Because we're going into a new decade. We're going to have to start having these conversations. Right. The greatest rap album of the past 10 years is Kanye West, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. People don't even remember that album because it was 10 years ago. I remember it because it was just that good. It's the best no, album no, no, no. of the decade. I, 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 Kendrick is number two. Kendrick has the number two and three albums of the decade to me. Just real good quick. Good Kid Mad just, just real quick. I'm not saying that it's not incredible music. I'm not saying that it's not, uh, he doesn't have amazing songs that we all enjoy, we want to dance to, we want to have fun with. What I'm saying is certain songs do not last the test of time and he's out here saying he is the greatest artist in the history of the world. Michael Jackson's songs, even with all these scandals, will be played in 50 years, right? I don't think Kanye has a thriller. I don't think Kanye has a... I mean, nobody has a Billie thriller. Billie Jean. I don't think Kanye has a bunch of, of, of songs that Michael Jackson... Give me Kanye's thriller. Let me like, tell you something, Andrew. Kanye, I don't think he got it, bro. I think Kanye, we forget about him. Kanye don't have a thriller because Kanye has a college dropout and Kanye has a late registration and Kanye has a graduation and Kanye has an 808 and a heartbreaks and Kanye has a Mute My Beautiful Dr. Twisted Fantasy. Those five albums right there. Mm -hmm. First of all, there's not too many rappers that can come out with five slappers back to back to back. And not only that. I'm not denying his, I'm not denying his ability or his impact on music. I'm not denying that. I'm just asking for legacy. We're, when you talk about yourself as one of the greatest artists of all time, we have to compare you to the artists that have stood the test of time He's like there, you bro. can't deny okay but what makes you stand the test of time is your music existing throughout time i don't know if kanye's music is going to exist Definitely throughout time will. There's, 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 I, I don't know there, there's, there's people who got through college because of kanye west now look i wasn't even a college i didn't i didn't live that experience we don't even listen to kanye's yo if you're at, i was at a I, we were at a, a, a nightclub we were in boston two nights in a row right we're at nightclubs I didn't even hear DJs playing any Kanye songs. Kanye never had club bangers. But wait, just wait. Just Kanye wait, never had club records. Just wait, just wait. You gonna hear Michael Jackson? Because he got club records. Kanye don't have club records. So then if he doesn't have club records, and the youth- He got youth, life records. Sure, sure. He doesn't have club records. The youth itself, right, isn't gonna, the next version of the youth isn't gonna resonate with Kanye because they didn't grow up with it like we did, right? Who's gonna continue playing it? 
What do you mean? We, Where, didn't grow, we didn't grow up with the Jackson 5. Because they got club records. So the club continued to play. Yeah. The parties continued to play. They existed and they permeated the party atmosphere, the party life, and all the DJs were going. They, it continued. The no music Tupac, continued. You ain't had no Tupac in the club that night, I bet. You ain't had no Biggie either. No, 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 no. Um, you can't say that. We might have heard. <laughs> this is, come you on, ain't no, no, we might have heard. You uh, ain't no Frank Sinatra in the club that night. 100%. Why are you going to the club? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, well, you was in a whack ass club. 100%. What, Frank, what Frankie Sinatra you heard in the club? Uh, so we, we heard Michael Bublé. We heard Frank Sinatra. <laughs> so we were hearing all the good. We were hearing all the slappers for real, dude. Was Bing it? Crosby was up in that bitch. Kanye. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you something else. Kanye's biggest, I'm not even going to say his biggest legacy, but I always talk about legacy based off the fruit that your tree bears. You don't have no Drake without Kanye. You don't have no Kid Cudi. You don't have no Wale. You don't have no J. Cole. You don't have no Chance the Rapper. You don't have no Big Sean. Like, these are all artists that were directly influenced by Kanye West. Like directly influenced, like like you gotta think think about when Kanye and Fifty Cent went head to head. Gangster rappers was the shit. Fifty was selling all of these records, and Kanye came out with his album, and they had that whole battle. The labels were battling who gonna win, who gonna win. Kanye washed Fifty. Yeah, Fifty, I, do, 50 sold like six hundred thousand, which is great, but Kanye sold like nine hundred something that yeah, week. I'm not, and, I'm and, not denying it. And and that changed hip hop. From that moment on, labels were like. Okay, gangster rap is cool, but let's go fuck with more artists. Like, let's go find some more Kanye's. No, I'm not denying his influence in the game. I'm not denying how he has has changed music and pushed music into a new genre. I just don't see the songs that will resonate throughout history. I got a lot of them, bro. I love We Major with Nas. I love Can't Tell Me Nothing with just Jeezy on the ad libs. I got like I, I I love I love I love I can even go to the Pablo album and I can fuck with like. The um waves with Chris Brown, like like I don't know, Ye got some joints to me, and I I love it, I yeah. love it, you love it, we all love it. The next generation, if it's not in the club, they're just not going to hear it. That's not true. So that's, it is. Yeah, that's not true. How you hear music? Not, so how you hear music? None of my favorite artists I listen to now are in the club. Exactly. There's no Wu Tang in the clubs no more. Yeah, you grew up with Wu Tang. This is yeah. different. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the generation that does is not familiar. How did I hear about Michael Jackson? I heard about it from the club. Me. I heard about it from MTV. I heard about it from these things. We get exposed to music this, bro. through different exactly. places. This. Yeah. What? I sat with Nyla. Salute to Nyla, my niece Nyla. Um, my man Deli. Right. We was at the house on Saturday night. Right. We was eating, drinking, and fucking. I we were on YouTube for four hours. Right. All I was playing in was old shit. And right. I was shocked at the things that they knew. Right. And I'm like, the reason they know it is because of YouTube. They get on YouTube, you type in one, it might be one Kanye West record, and that shit take you down a wormhole. You be like, oh shit, this shit slapping, that shit slap. That's how they discover music, bro. They literally discover music now. You listen to a lot of Tina Turner? Actually, I don't. I don't listen to a lot, but I you don't know. listen to no Tina Turner. Why not? I I'm, have you know I you have don't. Older, I have name older one sibling. Tina Turner song. I never listen to Tina Turner. Name one what? Tina Turner She's song. She's an icon, and that movie slapped. And the Kanye West movie. You know who movie, else slapped? That Kanye no. West. <laughs> movie. Hey, and that Kanye <laughs> West movie. That Kanye, <laughs> that Kanye West biopic going slap. Oh, for sure. And when it comes back out in twenty years, for sure. if motherfuckers have forgotten, they will be reminded. For sure. <laughs> Just like they got reminded in New Edition. And exactly. and Bobby Brown, like bro, Kanye, Kanye, What's your Kanye, not going song? nowhere, bro. There are boys to men songs that will be sung throughout history. I really believe it. I believe in forty years we'll be seeing some boys to men. Kanye songs. too. I I don't know which. I don't know which. Which is your favorite album? I don't Kanye? know which. Let me Google it's Kanye's nice. great album. I don't know which. No, what's your favorite album? I want to see what comes up when you say this. Kanye, probably West. Pablo. That's your favorite. Pablo was one? great. Yeah, that was probably my favorite. I mean, I, I liked I liked College Dropout as well, okay. and like that, but that hit me early, you know. Um, Late registration. Yeah, but Pablo, it was probably Pablo. Maybe, maybe College Dropout. Maybe College wow. Dropout. Wow. Kanye West's greatest hits. Strong ain't going nowhere. Yep. They still that shit. St that shit still plays in the clubs. 
Stronger, harder, man, than than a stronger. I so skipped what, that what, shit what, already. What, what, I skipped that right <laughs> don't now. Don't make me stronger. Skip that. Yeah. Niggas in Paris. Jesus walk. Niggas, niggas in Paris. Niggas yeah. in Paris. Yeah. Jesus walks. You really think we gonna be listening to that when yes. we're fucking eighty yes. years old? Yes. Oh, not yes. niggas ain't oh, stop. Niggas here. ain't gonna never stop What's going to Paris, Paris bro. <laughs> 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 okay. And Otis, you know how long they played Otis? No, for nobody to listen to Otis. This is his greatest hits. Gold digging ain't going nowhere. Runaway is my. Favorite Kanye West song of all time, just because I'm an asshole. Um, power definitely ain't gonna. Power was hard too. Slow jam. Love lockdown. All of oh, all of the lights, bruh. Touch the sky. Flashing lights. God <laughs> damn. So Andrew's bullshit right now. Crazy. Can't tell me yeah. nothing. Good life. Yo. All falls yo, down. Yo. Slow jams. Mercy. Yo. Mid. So fuck out. Ultra Beam. Ultra Light Beam ain't going nowhere. Ultra Light Beam is fire because he's barely on it. Oh my god. <laughs> All the songs he's barely on kind of slap. I'll, you I'll said honest, you almost bro. cried listening to You said you did cry listening to Ultra Light Beam. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he's barely on it. I listen yeah. to it. Listen, I support black women, bro. That's why I like that song. I don't know about y'all. That's what I support. But for real, I, I listen to that. I love that. Listen, there's no denying that he is an amazing artist and he's incredible at the music. I just don't think his music will stand the test of time. That, that's just has. my thing. It kind of, it already has. So. Uh, I don't think Drake will. No, not really. Really? I don't think Drake will. No, th dude, standing the test of time is tough. You only get, how many artists have stood the test of time? Like how many Michael Jacksons do we have? How many fucking Beethovens do we have? Like how many, who's who's the guy? I can't believe I'm forgetting his name, but like, uh, let's get it on. Marvin Gaye. Oh, sorry, Marvin sorry, Gaye, sorry. man. Like, how many of these people name. do you have? Well, I don't, you know. No, but his music is, it stands Ooh, up the top. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, you know how great you got to be for your but last you name to be gay like, you're, you're and dudes like are singing that. your fucking song got, still? <laughs> <laughs> like, Listen, this is back in the day. You right? got people but, like Stephanie Mills who people probably don't know, but when you hear uh, Good All Over, you know what I'm saying? You never heard that? Maybe oh, I have. shit make you feel good all over. <laughs> what? Bro. Frank Sinatra, <laughs> you gonna sing these songs till you're fucking dead. I know one Who Frank Sinatra is? song. Exactly. My no. way? You don't know my way? I know my way in New York. New York? I know two <laughs> joints. <laughs> but I'm not, but listen, I know the greatness of Frank Sinatra, but I only know two records. Yeah, but the records are slap. They do slap. Bro, Michael Buble? Bro, Vanilla I Ice Ice Baby, whether you believe, want to admit it or not, test, test, stood the test of time. I think you just had a stroke. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know if you were saying Tesla. I don't know if you were saying. Vanilla Ice was the, the, the fucking that. Tesla. All right. Vanilla Ice was stood up in a Tesla. All right. It's not like Vanilla Ice when he was hanging out that window. <laughs> but Ice Ice Baby stood the test of time. It did, and you know what? Not even his song. So what really stood That's the test of time? No, it was fun. The, the 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 guy who just died. Bro, these kids have no idea. What's the guy's name? These kids think under pressure. These kids have no idea. David Bowie. These kids really? think Julia Roberts. These kids think Julia Roberts oh. is Harriet Tubman. <laughs> they have no idea. <laughs> they have no fucking idea. Can we, can we talk while I look at while I look up Harriet Tubman? No, I mean not Harriet Tubman. While I look up. Uh, <laughs> oh, you got that underground hip hop. <laughs> Yo, we gotta start saying. So yo, we got the underground. <laughs> 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 so the underground hip hop <laughs> signed to Ruckus Records oh, in, 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 18, in 1843 signed to Ruckus Records oh Harriet my Tubman God. signed underground hip hop Listen, holy shit that Julia Roberts shit was so fucking stupid Yo, to me, these but it people, wasn't, you know why it wasn't stupid why because they do this all the time Yo, you know it's the same shit as Rodney Reed, right? Tell me. It's people attaching themselves to the issue, not the person. The Explain. issue the issue is they understand that Hollywood hires white actors to play roles that are not white. Yes. And they feel a way about that. Yes. So they tweet out something that is clearly bullshit. The tweet was that some exec said Julia Roberts should play Harriet Tubman. Oh, no, that really happened. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. The, 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 the guy, it, was, it came from a Q&A. The screenwriter of Harriet Tubman... He said that. As a joke. No. He said that when he used to be trying to get this movie made yeah. back in the day, no executives wanted to do it. And he said the times were different. He said he went in there and he pitched the story one time. And one executive was like, that's a great story. He said, we should get Julia Roberts to play Harriet Tubman. And he goes, 
Julia Roberts can't play Harriet Tubman. And they was, they was like, why can't Julia Roberts play Harriet Tubman? Because she's black. The exec clearly didn't know who the fuck Harry Tubman was. This he just, is hilarious. He just, <laughs> he just, oh my god! He, he just dude. thought the story was great. So then the screenwriter explained to him why it couldn't happen, and then the exec goes, "Well, because you no know, nobody wants to admit they're wrong. Well, that was a long time ago. Nobody will remember." Oh my god! <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yes, oh, that's crazy. the screenwriter. The screen. His name is uh. What's the screenwriter name? His name is like Greg Howard that wrote the Harry Tubman movie. I think it was. Yeah, and so, but that's funny. It's funny. And by the way, it's not the first time this has happened. Do you know motherfucking, um, I looked this up, because uh, I, I, I love doing this, just to have more research. 25 times white actors played people of color and no one really gave a shit. This oh. is from the HuffPost Latino Voices. Angelina Jolie played Mary Ann Pearl. Mary Ann, look at, look at Mary Ann Pearl. <laughs> Wait, is Mary Ann Pearl black? No, she's Afro, yeah, she's Afro-Cuban. Ah. Afro-Cuban has naturally curly hair and a dark complexion. Angelina Jolie has no African roots and played her. Ben Affleck played Antonio J. Mendez. In what? A movie. It was a fucking movie. Argo. You remember Argo? Oh, man, just... That guy was Mexican? <laughs> yes. No wonder he could sneak people out of the country. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> he was fucking Mexican. Do you remember this? Who's this? This is debatable. What is this? Josephine has played Michael Jackson. <laughs> You know what I mean? And it's debatable. And, you know, Michael did yeah, turn white. Debatable. Yeah, Michael, because Michael did a lot of that work himself. Mick Rooney as Mr. Unashi. Chris is furious oh, but, about this one. But that's but that's from, uh, <laughs> what is that from again? Mr. Unashi was Pink a Japanese Panther. landlord. Pink Panther, right? No, Breakfast at Tiffany's. This right here, Juliette Bonach played Maria, Maria Sagaval, Sagova. Come on, man. Yeah, that's crazy. Let's get to some ones y'all know. Yeah, Uh, yeah, because we don't know. I don't know none of these. Natalie Wood played Maria. Johnny Depp as Tonto. Johnny Depp looked like he could be Native American, though. Nah. Well, okay. Maybe. (laughs) I mean, you know. But he's not a member of the First Nation tribe. Okay, Elizabeth Taylor played Cleopatra. The moral of the story is... Hold on. Elizabeth Taylor played Cleopatra? (laughs) Yes. Hey. Now, doesn't this sound like Vanilla Ice? I'm going to tell my kids that was Hammer. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Vanilla Ice is not going to exist in my world. This right here. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah, and this but, should go way yeah, harder. Yeah, but you're you you, you you're not going to stay. No, no. What? Because, all right, stop. Collaborate and listen. Ice, Ice is back, back with, with a brand, brand new invention. invention. Exactly. Because they're holding me tightly. Well, here's the moral of the story. You don't know the words of that shit. Nothing down on you. That shit don't slap like Vanilla Ice, bro. Under pressure, pushing through. I, I wouldn't know that record if it wasn't for Vanilla Ice. That, but it's still Get taken. Get a white man's credit, bro. Wish for stealing. <laughs> <laughs> Give the white man his fucking credit for stealing. All right. <laughs> okay. Yo, you know what I realized when I was up in Boston? This is so crazy. Talk to me. Is uh, because you know Boston is is you know one of the starting places for the Revolutionary War, right? Yes. Uh, the Boston Tea Party and the whole thing. Um, so Europeans colonize, uh, the United States of America. It's not the United States of America at the time, but just North America, right? Mm -hmm. We colonize North America and then Britain is taking all of our wealth away from us, right? So we fight back Britain because they're treating us like we're colonized. Does that make sense? No. In other words, like, we colonize. Okay. Right? And America then, colonizes Britain. No, no, no. Uh, uh, let's say Britain, right? Okay. Colonizes North America. Okay. Right? And then Britain is extracting all the resources out of the land. Gotcha. Right? And then we fight back against Britain, right? Because we're like, yo, why are you treating us <laughs> like we're colonized? We do that a few years after we just colonized. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, but how we get there? What, what underground railroad did we take here with Julia Roberts to get to this point? <laughs> <laughs> how do we get here? I just think it's kind of funny that like we colonize, take everybody's shit, and then when Britain's taking our shit, we're like, hey, oh, <laughs> hey, I what mean, are you doing? Uh, yeah, but that's life. <laughs> that tea's though, right? expensive. It is. When it you is the life. bully, you don't want to get bullied. Facts, like, but like, that. you think at any point that's in time, why you the bully, right? But you think at any point in time they're like, yo, that was kind of cold, but we did it in Native Americans, that's bro. That's why you the bully. 
I kind of would have liked to see Julia Roberts play Harriet Tubman. Though. I think she could pull it off. Bro. What? You don't think that she knows the black actress. experience? So what? That doesn't mean she played Harriet Tubman. I, it's, it's, I, listen, what? let me tell you something. Hold on. You don't want to see? Come on. Let's just... Let, no. First of all, this is not like... a come to the microphone moment. But continue. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go no, on. for real though. Why would you want a white woman to play... Because I want to get these jokes off I wrote, okay? Now, listen. <laughs> Julia Roberts can play Vivian Ward in Pretty Woman. Well, Doesn't mean she can play Harriet Tubman in Pretty Slave Woman. Okay, we got another one. Just because Julia Roberts can play Laura Burney in Sleeping with the Enemy doesn't mean she can play Harriet Tubman in a movie called Sleeping with the Enemy Against My Will because Master Keep Raping Me. <laughs> what? That, that, that didn't slap. What okay, I got another one. I got another one. I got another one. Just on. because Julia Roberts can play Maggie Carpenter in One Away Bride doesn't mean she can play Harriet Tubman in a movie called... Come on, guys. Run away slave. Run away slave. I got it. Okay, one more. 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 Yeah, yeah. Sure, Julia Roberts can play Tess Ocean in Ocean's Eleven, but she can't play Harriet Tubman in a movie titled Atlantic Ocean Eleven. No. Finish him. An origin story of how her grandmother got here? The tailor write these for you? No. <laughs> no, I want more. Keep going. That's all I got. Keep going. That's all I got. Yo. Hold on. What? If Julia Roberts plays Harry Tubman, can can you fuck can you fuck her and be staying true to black women? Oh my god. No, it's gosh. a character. It doesn't count? No. Nah, it doesn't count. I wouldn't want to see that in no way though, because there's no way you No, can... you know who should play Harry Tubman? They already got somebody. Harry Tubman's out. Yeah. What? Harry Tubman came out two weeks ago. Yeah. That, that was the been, whole point. That should have been a little too underground. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I, you know what? I, I haven't seen I haven't seen it in no theaters. It's out though. So who played Harry Tubman? A woman from Britain. I heard Flame played it. Man, <laughs> shut up. No, for real. Hold on. Flame was playing Hold Harry Tubman, Tubman, bro. What's her name? Ain't oh. no wrong with being a little gay. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? Her name is Cynthia. Her name is Cynthia Arrivo. Yo, how you feel about all these uh, black English people taking uh, on the black American roles? I asked Lena Waif about that. Um, you know what I mean? Taking jobs from from uh, black people whose ancestors have dealt with the black American. I thought oppression. Lena. I thought Lena Waif had a great. Listen, I think that you know when it comes to the black American experience. The black American experience is very unique. I think that a lot a lot of us, we still deal with the trauma from the things that happened during slavery and during right. segregation. So you would want a black American to, 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 you know, take on those roles because you feel like a black American is the only person that could experience that. But I mean, a lot of the... A lot of the sentiments that you would have to have to play these roles, a lot of the energy you would have to have, you have... Experience as a black person globally. Period. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's racism. It's it's segregation. It's prejudice. That's really all it is at the end of the day. And they're and good fucking actors, those black British ones. Yes. Holy shit. And it's fighting back against good. that. Because Daniel... What's Daniel's name from Get Out? Kuliaki. Daniel Kuliaki? I made that up. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ain't, no, ain't, <laughs> ain't, ain't no cop seeing Daniel black ass and saying... He's British. He's British. Yes. But in fact, when they pull him over and he start talking in that accent, they're going to be like, give me your license and, I, and your identification. Because I don't know who the fuck you think you fooling. You understand what I'm saying? So it don't matter. You think that makes a cop more comfortable, though? No. That might be a good technique if you get pulled over. No. It's like, was there a problem, officer? <laughs> Maybe. I think you're trying to be funny. <laughs> really? I think you get out the car and do your fucking ABCs. A, B, C, yes. oh, D, E, F, G. Now I'm calling for backup. <laughs> <laughs> You're still playing. This guy's still playing. Wow, there's a bunch of you coppers. <laughs> he won't stop that fucking accent. What seems to be the problem? <laughs> he just goes back to his record. But that's so, all I'm saying. Like, so it's like, I don't have a problem with them doing that. Like, I don't think that, I don't think the, I think the black American experience is unique. But when you have black skin, dark skin, you've experienced all of those same things. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's it. So, are have, we you, done? have you watched the uh, the Underground Railroad movie? No, I haven't. I haven't got yo. I haven't. I got to catch up on movies, bro. Yeah, I haven't. Watched I haven't, I haven't seen the Hustlers movie with J Lo. I, I haven't see seen fucking the Joker. I ain't seen the Harry. Wait, you haven't movie. seen Joker yet? No, Queen and Slim coming out. Yo, Chadwick Boseman got a movie coming out this week. I want to see called Twenty One Bridges or some What's shit. What's up like with that? that movie? Why? Why? Why there's so many bridges? What's going on with that? Why would He's you actually playing a cop? Yeah. That's going around killing people for killing cops. 
But why? What? What is the bridges? I have no idea. <laughs> Next week, Queen and Slim comes out. But can we get back to the bridges here? I don't know anything about the bridges. The bridges. Why over. would anybody name a movie about? Bridges, as if that's the exciting thing for I gotta see like it. Joker. Ooh, I like the Joker. I'll go yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah. Black Panther. Love the Black Panther. I'll go see it. Right. Pretty Women. Woman. I like Pretty Women. Maybe I'll go you'll see go it. See it because it's Chadwick Boseman, and you want to know what the fuck's up with these twenty-one bridges. I don't. It just sounds like traffic. I'm gonna check it out. Yes, yeah, shut. It literally sounds like a commute. Is this a movie about commuting to work? Is this about how I annoying? Thought you made traffic the movie. I was like, traffic was great. <laughs> no, that was a good movie. That's just but it's trafficking drugs. Yeah, yeah twenty-one yeah, yeah. bridges. I, I, I don't know. You got to go over the bridge. You got to go over the bridge to what? Know. Say. Only, only, only say. Taylor would reach for that one. Taylor will reach for one that's unreachable. Say what? Say what? What do you have to do? It might be like a Put metaphor Put your lips on the mic. Oh, there's a microphone over there. What do you mean? What do you think is it a meta metaphor for? I, I didn't see the trailer yet. Taylor, what, 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 what energy drew well, you to uh, the microphone? Well, let me invite you all to a major rally we're having in Queens, New York. What, are you doing? what energy drew you to the microphone? You need to take a bridge to get you to Queens. You just asked me a question. <laughs> no, 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 no. Prior to that. When you talked about saying that you would like to see Julie Roberts say Harriet Tubman. But I was being sarcastic. I just wanted to get my jokes off. Them shit slapped. Yo, yo, yo. Can you, can you please, can you please just come back to the microphone for one second? No. Can I feel like you're not? Yeah, I just <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean this. What if Julia Roberts was such a great actress. And what if she didn't do blackface? She did it the old fashioned way. She just tanned. She went to Aruba. She got very tan, right? Do not. What if she got tan? First of all, she still has white hair and everything else. No, fuck the wig and everything else. Like that's You don't not okay. got your real hair. What's the difference? It's okay. I'm still black. Prove it. Dick talk. Dick talk. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do that at the wrong time? <laughs> Was that the wrong one? <laughs> Did I do the wrong one right there? Whoopsie. Yo, don't give me the soundboard. It's lit if I get the soundboard, bro. So we've do been not, telling you, yo, bro. son. Listen, the soundboard? Shit. Hey, man. <laughs> Shit. The soundboard's what's up. I'm going to be Harriet Tubman. I'm playing Harriet Tubman. Real talk. And I'm going to sneak all those fine black men above the makes and dicks in line. And let me tell you something. Ain't no wrong with being a little gay. <laughs> if you're going to play Harry Tubman, first thing you have to do is uh, sneak your little dick in between your legs. You got to tuck that motherfucker. <laughs> just, right. show, just show pooch. Okay. All right. As always, <laughs> this fucking podcast has gone too far. Yo, yeah, but so we I, did it. We went from serious to whatever the fuck we're doing We was we're never right serious. Now. Come on, <laughs> stop yelling, bro. Why are you yelling for no... Andrew's medication is worn out, so we're going to get All right. Listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.